something you dream about as a little kid. It'd be, it'd be something that I'll never let go and, and I'll remember forever. I think that would just be one of the best things I've ever had in my life. Getting the chance to hoist another trophy is, you know, even thinking about it just gives me the chills. Now we're two wins away from the, you know, possibly the biggest thing that could happen to us in our lives. I know how hard it is to repeat um, in any league. Um, it, it'd be pretty special to win a national championship. The next two games are so important and uh, being able to win again would just be uh, unbelievable. The intensity level, the competition level, the, the will to win just increases all around. We know who we are. We know what we can do and we're excited to show it. Kind of start to be able to taste the championship right around the corner and I think that you kind of definitely feel that going into the field before. The two most desired words for a college athlete, national champion. They are playing for one this weekend in the great American sports city of Buffalo, New York. That's where we are for the 2019 Frozen Four. And for the first time in 43 years, we have three of the last four national champions. And UMass, for the first time ever, they get to a Frozen Four. John Butcher, Dawson, Barry Melrose with you for the seventh consecutive year, calling the Frozen Four for ESPN Barry. And Minnesota Duluth won this thing last year on the strength of their defense. They have three NHL draft picks, and they were great again this year. And you know what? They're going to do it again. The oh. exact same recipe. They're not going to change a thing. The defense is powerful. The defense is fast. The defense is mean. Wolf at number five. He's big, bad wolf. He can burn your house down. <laughs> you got Sandberg, six foot four, 220 pounds. You got the Anderson boys. Great movement in the neutral zone. Moving the puck up. One quick pass. You've got Rail, the best sixth defenseman in the college hockey. And oh yeah, they got Perunovic, number seven, who might be the second best offensive defenseman in college hockey. This team has everything. They're going to be very tough to play against, and they can shut down skill from those other teams, John. This is a great, great defense. There's Scott Perunovic right there, St. Louis Blue second round pick. Colby Cohen between the benches for the first time with us, the hero of the 2009 Frozen Four for BU. Colby, what line to your left of those Friars can possibly score today? Well, Barry, you mentioned the defense at Duluth, and they're going to go up against the second highest scoring offensive line in college hockey with Casper Bjorkvist, their captain on the wing, Josh Wilkins and Jack Dugan. This is a line that can absolutely bring it offensively. They can do it the hard way and grind you down and yeah they have a 45 point score a 39 point score and another guy with Bjorkvist who's a second round pick so this is a high flying line boys it should be fun to watch and I got to tell you something down at ice level the butterflies have settled in for these guys this is some big energy down here great to have Colby along this year the frozen four returns to Buffalo for the first time since 2003 last time we were here Thomas Vanek and Minnesota won it all they won back to back Minnesota Duluth, the team in white, trying to win back-to-back -back for the first time since the Denver Pioneers did it at the start of this century. And we are underway in Buffalo. And it's the question we ask Barry before every hockey game. What is going to happen? Defense of Minnesota. And on their toes! And there's the first big hit of the game from the Big Bad Wolf. I think I mentioned the Big Bad Wolf might be blowing some houses down today. Right there, he's ready to go. Providence, though, contains the puck. Shot blocked. Duhane, the second line of Conway, Thompson, and Duhane. But you, when you're a defenseman, it just yeah. love to get that first hit, get you pumped up. And certainly Wolf did that, and the rest of the team is ready also. Big hit there from Casper Borquist. What's the pace like down there, Colby Cohen? Both benches are up on their feet right now, and you're right, Butchie. The pace is high right now. This is usually the feeling out period where you've got those nerves. You're trying to settle them down, and Barry is dead right. That first hit can really settle you in as a player. First minute of the 2019 Frozen Four in the books. Providence College Friars in the black. Minnesota Duluth, the defending champions, in the home whites, and here they come. Justin Richards comes the other day. His dad's an assistant coach with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Behind that, it goes to Mackay, the glue guy on this line. Both veteran clubs, both have been there before. Neither one, once they get through this first three or four minutes unscathed, they'll settle down and start playing their type of hockey. This is Dayarnay, a leader back there at six foot six inches. Nice pass up ahead. O'Neal, centering pass. Nobody there off the bench. Shot back towards Shepard and a save by Hunter Shepard. Right from the get-go, Barry's focus was the big defense of the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs and six foot four inch Nick Wolf. Excuse my fella Cossidy. Yeah, that is such a great hit. The shoulder was down, no penalty on the play. That's a key in an area. You don't want to give up a power play early in the game. Wolf did everything textbook, fundamentally perfect right there. And the best start that Duluth could ask for a hit like that to get their players pumped up. 
But most of the play has been down here at this Bulldog end. So the Friars are on their toes like they normally are. They play straight ahead and hard. And they also, obviously, a strong squad. They're not going to wilt. Like I said, they've won the national championship. They know what it takes. they got a coach that's experienced. Shot from the point wide of Shepard. Fryer still controlling play here. Tate turns and fires. Pad saved by Hunter Shepard, who's been red hot here in the postseason. Ryan Tate, a guy that Coach Nate Lehman told us yesterday was a glue guy, an energy guy. He's a guy that can really bring the pace up of this bottom six, an important player, Butchie, as this game goes along. See if the Bulldogs can get some pressure on Hayden Hockey in net for the Friars. Scoring first is so important in hockey games, but especially when the Scores are usually so low like they happen in this NCAA tournament. I would normally agree with you. Don't forget the Friars have made a couple big comebacks so far in this year. Uh, big, big comebacks. So they're not out of it if um, the lose scores first by any stretch. UMD with the puck now. There's Kobe Roth. Injured in last year's championship game, so he's glad to be back. To see him back a chance to play. Exactly right, John. That was a nasty injury last year. Prince throws it across. Conway with it. He was the one that Nick Wolf hit to start the game. Farages with the puck. Islander drop pick towards the net. Bounces and Shepard steers it. Conway. Can't control it. Can't lose that puck in the neutral zone right in the slot like that in the other team's end. Make sure you get under the wall or down low behind the net. Here comes Swain at the top line of Minnesota to loop out there. Krieger, number 25, is the center on this line. There's Noah Cates. He's a Flyers draft pick, number 21. Michael Callahan, a Coyote draft pick, jumps on the puck in the zone. Spot there, though, by Krieger, and it goes wide. Big line back out there for Providence that Colby Cohen talked about. Josh Wilkins, big year for him out of Raleigh, North Carolina, but he'll go change. 46 goals out of that line. I played them a lot, too, man. You don't have to be Paul Blake or anybody to figure that out. Get those great guys out there playing as much as possible. I don't think our crowd knows who Toe Blake is. What do you think? <laughs> Reference lost on younger viewers. <laughs> I heard of him in Slapshot one time, Barry. That's how I know the name. Toe Blake! Gordy! Here come the Friars now. McDermott, Sukumarin out there. Sukumarin, the extra forward. Hit from behind, power play, Bulldogs coming up. Bimal Sukumar is going to go to the box, but here come the Bulldogs threatening the score. There's the touch-up, power play number one. So it's going to be a cross check, it appears, on Sukumarin. Got a good beard right there, nothing wrong with that. Pucks on the wall. Could be from behind. Wasn't really a, a normal cross check that we usually right. talk about. Yeah, I didn't see him put uh, I, the put stick, two hands. Yeah, he didn't have two hands on the stick. There's Nate Lehman. What an interesting story. His plan was to go to Maine and become. Uh, you know, biology was his major. He's going to be environmental science, but he helped out with Maine, helped Sean Walsh up there. So he became, he became a coach and got into psychiatry. Totally. So he did not plan this life that he now has. He's one of the more... He's going to get he's going to get an NHL coaching job. Both these guys are going to get an NHL coaching jobs. Scott Sandlin, of course, looking to repeat as a national championship head coach for the Bulldogs. Seems to be a question here. There's Scott. I, I think he's done a great job. I think he took a franchise over that wasn't winning. Uh, Nate did the same thing. Nate Lehman did the same thing. That's why I think both these guys uh, deserve a shot in an NHL job. Okay, so here we go. Big moment for the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. They've cut off not to slow starts this year. They would love to get an early power play goal, get the lead, and really dictate the terms. That is their formula. Providence did not allow a power play goal in their regional in Providence. Going to be an aggressive penalty killer right there. They didn't sit back. They didn't form a box. They attacked the puck carry right away. So we'll see if they continue to do that. Prince and Kavanaugh up top for the Friars to try to kill this penalty. There's Pruvich. What a pass. And the slot shot. Oh, good stick work there. And it goes up into the netting as, Nick, as uh, Noah Cates was between the hashies with a great chance. Scott Perunovic, a guy for this team who's so important. Watch how crafty he is, the defenseman for UMD, the patience, his ability to enter the zone and then get his feet back towards the goal and make that pass. That was a pretty highly skilled play, huh, Bear? Too easy. You can't let that happen. Somebody's got to attack him a little quicker than that. He'll eat you up alive if you let him do that every time he carries the puck up the ice. Yeah, he wasn't drafted, and uh, Keith Kachuk, who does amateur and college scouting for the St. Louis Blues, really liked him. They took him in the second round last year, did the Blues, 
Keith is here this weekend, and they really like Scott Perunovic to help their depth on the blue line in the future. Friars trying to kill this penalty. Richards. Puck gets off by Prince. He's getting a good set of hands. Number 11's a long and rangy forward. He can do a lot of things with his team. Tufty, first round draft pick of the Stars. Nice pass. Here comes Sandberg. Great shot. Whistles over the head of Hayden Hockey. And that's some heat on it. That, that thing could have done some damage if it would have hit anybody. Big strong defense with number four there in white. Winnipeg Jet draft pick. Here's Tufty. Power play set up now. They got a good stretch here. Plenty of time to try to get some chances. That pass is intercepted. The Friars can't clear the bouncing puck. Makai. Anderson. That's Mikey Anderson. LA King draft pick in front. Tip Tuffy. Save hockey. Richards. Makai. Side of the net in front to Tuffy. Can't get it to him. They were trying to set up the big guy. And it's cleared by the Friars. Providence getting lucky there, not getting the puck out after being very aggressive and doing a nice job along the walls. But in these big games, you've got to get those out. It's got to be one chance and right out of the zone. Yeah, Anderson didn't make a great play with that puck there. He had it right on his stick right in front of the net. He could have made a better pass. Turnover, shot, never got through. I don't think any of the pucks have got through. Providence has done a great job of getting the shooting lanes. In strength now, Krieger back out there, but Duhame has it number nine. Wild draft pick, grew up in Florida. Gets it out off the skate, however, Friars can't control. Now the Bulldogs have had most of the play the last couple of minutes, of course, helped by the power play. Good zone time, but no real uh, scoring chance by any stretch of imagination. So, good kill by Providence. The Friars sit back here, very little 1-2-2. One, 1-2-2, two, two. One, two, two, and then you got three guys from Duluth at the far blue line. So, one team's trying to take away the long pass, one team's trying to get the long pass. Bulldogs start to win the races for the puck in their end. They get stronger as the game goes on. It's going to be icing here. Those big bodies wear you down, John. Faceoff will come back in the Providence end. I, I like to start for both teams. I think both coaches are happy. You got the big hit. You got the physical play. Duluth has already been on the power play, drew a penalty. Providence has killed the pe pe penalty very easily, very good. Uh, I think both these coaches are very happy with the start. There's Nate Lehman. Wife Alice, Ty, Bryce, and Nolan are his boys. And what's interesting, remember, he left Union, and they won the national championship yeah. the year he left. Oh, just wide. Yeah, he really built that program and recruited all those fellas. Then came to Providence and really has given them success they've never had in yeah. school history. Every year, man. They're around uh, the tournament every year. So both teams kind of feeling each other out here in the early going in Buffalo. That first goal is so important. The NCAA Frozen Four is brought to you by Little Caesars, where you can get a large bacon wrap deep deep dish for only 12 bucks. Notre Dame, the UMD Bulldogs. One team will leave a national champion. Coleman takes the shot. Rick Short side snipe. Shot, bad angle, it's in. Two nothing, Bulldogs. Face off, 50-50, that's it. Minnesota Duluth, national champions. The Frozen Four back in Buffalo, no score. If you're watching at home and not quite sure who Minnesota Duluth is, well, I'm gonna start with the geography lesson. Duluth is a port city on Lake Superior. It's about 150 miles north of Minneapolis. The, student, the school has 11,000 students as part of the University of Minnesota system, founded in 1947. They hired Scott Sandlin as their hockey coach in 2000. They only won seven games his first year, but quickly he improved the program. 2004, they made the Frozen Four. They've won titles in 2011 and 18. This is a homegrown team, 17 members from the, the state of Minnesota, including their entire defense and first line and they play like underdogs even though they've become the top dogs. They really have Quint, third straight Frozen Four appearance. They're the favorites, they're not the underdogs anymore. No, they are the they're betting favorites this weekend in Buffalo and again, going for back-to-back -back in their third straight appearance. Duhame shot just wide. And you hear from hockey people in Minnesota that they have changed the way these teams are built in Minnesota. That's why so many Minnesota teams have improved so no! Big collision there, Barry. 
I like the big collisions, Johnny. The bigger the bodies, the bigger the collisions. That's your There's question. a lot of big bodies out there. Yeah, 20 in black. He's no shrinking violet by any stretch of imagination. He's a big man. Oh, yeah, he's built. Saw him warming up before the game, guys. He's got three trunks for legs. A very <laughs> thick kid. Pass in front. He's being saved by Shepard as the Friars almost struck first. There's those goalies with the pads on the ice. They take away the take away the ice, make you beat them upstairs. He didn't see where that puck was. He didn't know where it was. He stopped it with his pads anyway. So good execution, good fundamental goaltending. Good job here. I love the way Providence attacked the net. They won the race to the net. Two Providence Friars won the race to the net. Obviously, the coaching staff at Duluth will talk about that. He didn't see where it was until they hit his pads, stopped right underneath him. You see how he was a couple inches off the post, Barry? We saw that in our regional last weekend for Notre Dame, and that seems to be a trend for goaltenders coming off the post and giving, trying to take away the play across rather than the short side. They're changing every couple years, these guys, because, man, they used to be five foot six, 300 pounds, always was the fat kid growing up. <laughs> now they're the best athletes on, on the playground. These guys are all 6'4", six, 6'5", six, great athletes. Louis Rail behind his own net. Not a lot of great offensive chances have been generated yet. Tofty slap shot. High off the glass. Here come the Friars now. Nate Lehman is definitely a tactician type of coach. He tries to change things up. He tries to pick the lock that's on the safe and figure out how to win a game, take a team's weaknesses and and see if he can exploit them. And right now, they, they, I sense, Colby, they're being a little careful, Providence. Yeah, both teams in the neutral zone right now seem to be making sure that they're back. Both coaches talking to their benches about supporting the puck. That's the only way to get through these neutral zones when there's so many bodies. Makai goes in front of his own net. Bjorkquist, very aggressive forecheck. So, Barry, we've seen him sit back, and now we see him on their toes. Yeah, three on two there, John. They mishandled the puck in the neutral zone. They could have been off to the races. So, a uh, great break right there by uh, Duluth. Had a great chance, just couldn't get it going. Richards all by himself while his teammates change. He'll try to hold it there until he gets some help, and that's a great job. That's a great change by Duluth. That's a smart team, a veteran team. Excel. Rister kicked wide by Hayden Hockey in net for Providence. John Gillies was the goaltender when they won it all. Steal in front! Saved by Hockey, and he goes in, but obviously we heard the whistle. That's no goal as players scatter in front of the net. It was blown dead by the official once it appeared that Hockey went to put his catching glove over the puck. It did squirt into the net, but clearly after the whistle blew. Yeah, Callahan's up there. He's throwing a few punches. Nothing can he, They can't lose him. He's got to play 25, 30 minutes in tonight's game. There's the play behind net. Everything looked good. A little bit of forecheck. A mistake by falling. You got to lose puck in the slot area. A shot comes. It was underneath the bodies right there, but as soon as the go a referee loses sight, Cole, but you know this, the whistle goes. They're supposed to do that. Even as a fan, you get mad at them sometimes. When they quit seeing it, the whistle goes. They are going to take a look at it right now. They're in there with the headsets, and they got the big screen there in the penalty box, so they're able to check. And I would think that they're checking to see when the whistle blew, Butchie, because I think there was a bit of a quick whistle, but I guess they're going to double check. I agree. It was quick. It may be probably should have been a goal because I don't think it was tied up, but that whistle clearly blew. L let's listen and watch. So we can't see the puck. You don't know where the puck is. It definitely blew before it went in. So I, th I think this is going to definitely be a no goal. It was closer than I thought, though. Yeah, I thought it was, was going to be a little clearer, but yeah. I do think you're right, Butchie. I think that the whistle was blown before the puck got we, scooted into the net. Do, they, do we have the old one? I meant to blow the whistle quicker. <laughs> right. That, I think that would have applied, <laughs> but it actually blew before the puck went across the line. So that really made, I think, Barry, an easy call. You're right. The intent was there well before the whistle blew, and it wasn't in the net anyway. So that's a good break for Providence. A, a slow whistle Great break probably means one nothing. Yep. Yeah. Little break now. Both teams settle down. We've had a good break. It's uh, 10 minutes left, so they can talk when those players get over to the bench. There's Hayden Hockey again. John Gillies was the tender when Providence won in 2015 it against was great Boston that year University. Too, man. We have uh, Atlantic Hockey Association officials. That's apropos. A lot of Atlantic hockey schools right in this area, including Canisius, that plays right next door. RIT, they've been in the pros and four before. Yeah, yeah they're out in Rochester, yeah. Niagara nearby. First break for AIC. 
winning the tournament game this year. And almost a chance to get to the Frozen Four. You see Wolf pinch in there? He yeah. can pinch when a winger takes his spot at the point. I love to see guys pinch when you're covered by a forward. That's a great job. And Perunovic. now Perunovic is down on the other yep. side, Barry. This is an active decor. Perunovic and Wolf. They didn't drive this far to sit back, baby. <laughs> Well, the Providence College player falls to the ice. We saw Borkris Yeah, fall. we've seen a number of them fall. You're right. Get the trainers in there checking for Knicks. Maybe there's something on the bench that's taking the edge off. So see if the Friars can kind of... They stretch one guy to the far chance. blue lines, and then they have a guy skating around at center ice. So trying to get that one stretch pass, one one break. McDermott out there for checking with Tate. Mackay chips it. And it's once again behind Hayden Hockey. Puck has been behind Hayden Hockey the last five, six minutes. Rail, nice pass up to Richards. Sukumar misses the hit. There's Makai. Nice look to Rail. He knew he was there. Pass in the slot. Blocked by Dayarnay wonderfully. Here come the Friars and Louis with the big hit on Tate. Did I say he was a sixth defenseman? I think I just brought him up to a four. That was a pretty good shift by Louis Rail. And Wilkins delivers a hit. Makai brings it up. He's hit along the wall by Dugan. Vegas Golden Knight draft pick number 12 in black. Getting good, Johnny Boy. It's getting good out there. Now pick it up. That Kobe, you be careful. Hit. Oh, that was a heavy hit by Dugan. That's a kid who can play offense, and he's not scared to throw the body. Oh, look at this dance in action. But Prince is able to steal it away from Tanner Latteru. Again, the chess match in the neutral zone. Now they're coming up together. Not looking for the stretch pass so much. Sandberg to the right to Mirages and the Flyers get it out. He's knocked down a couple times along that wall. O'Neal, bam, another hit on the side by Kavanaugh. Back to get it, Mikey Anderson. Up the boards it goes. Back to Jay Miller. Miller centers Exel and Roth. Tuffy knocks down and oh, man, that make people happy. They want that big guy to throw his body around. They want him to be mean and nasty in today's game. Great hitting in game one of the Frozen Four. We had like four. five great hits, haven't we? Five hits for Providence, four for the Bulldogs. A lot of chirping between these two benches right now, guys. The energy between this game from what we saw last weekend, not even comparable. These two teams are going at each other. More hits than shots on goal, nine to eight right now. I'll take that any day of the week. And that's your kind of hockey. Oh, this is, is fun ever? to be down here for this, guys. I'm in the crosshairs right now. It's like a spirited conversation. Duhame is strong, number nine. They are going to go back and get it. Won't be icing. Kobe Roth is right on his heels. Nice little play to Callahan, the other defenseman. That play's worked on every day in practice. That little reverse, get it going the other way. Just see how well these guys are coached. They always revert back to what they're coached during the year. And you saw a nice breakout. This is a chess match right now with some hard body shots thrown in there. Don't do anything stupid in those scrums. Don't hit from behind. Don't cross check. The refs are letting them play. Just don't abuse it. And the Bulldogs want to stay out of the box after the Friars' power play performance last two That's weekends ago in Providence. That's an understatement. Five for eight on the power play. Now that'll make you a humbler team. Puck goes over the glass. This has been a tight checking physical game with some spirited collisions. First period winding down in Buffalo. So much on the line. Boy, it's amazing Providence even made it here to Buffalo. They were losing 3-0 to Minnesota State in the very first game. But back they came. Six unanswered goals. Two power play goals from Josh Wilkins, number 15. They come for behind the win. 6-3 over Minnesota State, the one seed. And then shut out Cornell the very next day. Nate Lehman and the Providence College Friars back in the Frozen Four. Quinn on the bench. Coach, what is your primary concern right now? Um, you know, I, I think it's right now I thought we controlled the neutral zone for the first four or five minutes, then we took the penalty. Uh, and they're starting to control the neutral zone, so we got to get back to getting through the neutral zone, getting on our toes, and uh, I, I want to see five guys, five of our guys in the offensive zone. When we get five of our guys in the offensive zone, we put together good shifts, but we got to get up there together. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what happened, Barry. We saw that. And Providence is now starting to uh, try to get things back up the back up the ice. 
Here comes Jacob Bryson. He's a fun offensive defenseman to watch. 18 in black. Right there. He's a lot like Perunovic. He's a Buffalo Sabre draft pick. 18 in black. And, of course, here we are in Buffalo. We asked him and said, yeah, it is, it is a bigger deal for me since I was drafted by the team that we're playing the Frozen Four in, the city that we're in. So keep an eye on Bryson. Check the wings out. See how you like them, what, what style yeah. you like, how hot they are, things like that. That's very important. We're down every uh, road a bit. Friars need some sort of pushback here. They have not really generated anything offensively since the penalty like Nate Lehman told our Quint Kessner. The Luth is a tough team to push back against because of being veteran players and, and so big and strong. They don't make a lot of mistakes. you got to earn whatever you get against Duluth. Shot from the point. A lot of block shots for the Friars. Doing a good job here. Blocking shots early. Here's some space. Wrist shot right into the belly of Hayden Hockey. Capital One impact players. Barry and Colby, who do you have, Barry, for your Capital One impact player? Colby, I'm going to pick uh, right there Vincent DeHarnay. from Laval. That's where Mary Laval played junior. Tallest player in the Frozen Four. Uh, he, we had a great communicate, great talk with him the other day. He's a fantastic young man, and he's an Edmonton draft pick, and Edmonton needs defenseman bad, Colby. Well, Scott Perunovic, he's on the other side of that, Barry. Of course, you're taking the big defensive defenseman. Sorry, I'm sorry. Offensive defenseman, Scott Perunovic. He's a guy who's so dynamic on the back end, and a, a good chance there off the draw for Minnesota Duluth. But Perunovic, he's a difference maker, guys. When he gets the puck on his stick, his ability to move laterally across that blue line, almost Shane Gostas fair life. His numbers were down a bit this year, fighting a couple of injuries, so he's looking to break out here. And teams are focusing on him now. They know how good he is. He's seeing different defenses. Face off one again by the Bulldogs. Back behind the net, set there by Dylan Sandberg. And the Bulldogs are starting their grinding style of hockey on the board. They have the line to do that right now with Mackay out there. Again, the puck is behind Hayden Hockey. Friars got to be careful here. They're playing with fire against the defending champions. Sandberg way in deep. Again, he can do that because Mackay is taking his spot back in the blue line. So you can be aggressive as a D and pinch down when you got faith in those wingers. Your quick takes a shot to the chin. His bucket goes snapping back, but no penalty call. Turnover, Friars, but just can't get anything going. Uh, Johnny, you love getting a good hit against a star player on the other team like that, sending a message. This has been a great first period, man. This has been awesome. Shepard stops it. Shepard, move it. <laughs> Took a while there, and so as a result, the Friar four checkers are able to engage. Oh, there's a nudge from behind. No Nothing penalty. called. Nope. No power plays yet for the Friars. As we mentioned, they were so red hot in Providence in the regional. They would love to get a chance here, especially late in the first when they're having a trouble generating. Mikey Anderson made a great play there. He was going to go up, take the man. He checked behind him to make sure his partner was there. Then he attacked. Great play by Anderson. Really smart player, Mikey Anderson. It's a smart team. And right now, Providence perplexed at trying to get some offense going. Welcome back to Buffalo, New York, the defending champion, Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. No score against the Providence College Friars. Coming up at the International Report, we're here in Buffalo. John Brickley, Sean Richland, Dave Starman, they break down wow. the first period. Look ahead to our second game tonight. Denver and UMass, there are the boys watching the first period here in Buffalo. Great That's to have them time. on site. That's Look at that good-looking crew up there. Blowing out the budget. Where, where's that, Colby? I haven't seen that. Where I heard that? Steve Levy was busy, though. What's up with that, Brick? Yeah. All right, your Frozen Four storylines here in Buffalo. Again, the first Frozen Four appearance in UMass school history, first and so seven, uh, to make the tournament at all. That was with Jonathan Quick and company. Look at this, three of the last four champions are here. First time that has happened in 43 years. And the Bulldogs looking to become the first team since Denver in 04 and 05 to repeat as champions. So hard to do. This is their third straight Frozen Four and a shot at a second straight title. Friars looking for their second national championship in school history. The other one coming just four years ago in Boston. Right now they're having a hard time in the first period generating offensive chances. They don't have a power play yet. They survived one. But again, they're used to playing close games. Both these teams are. We're not going to see any panic. I mentioned it before. I think both coaches are pretty happy with the start of this game. 
it's a lot of emotion out there. They got by that, no bad mistakes. Uh, got by that, and now it's just grinding it out, grinding it out. Who's going to crack first? Kobe, you were saying Scott Sandlin wasn't happy during that last timeout? Yeah, I think he'd like to see his team move their feet more. I've heard that up and down their bench. I think they feel they're a little too stationary at times with the puck. So getting through that neutral zone, especially, Butchie, you got to move your feet a little bit more. Coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the NCAA bowling championships this Saturday, 6.30 on ESPN Youth. For more information on the NCAA bowling championship, visit NCAA.com. What kind of bowler were you in your prime, Barry? <laughs> uh, Terrible? Did you ever have a good game? I had a, I had a lot of cold beverages when I golfed. Did, when did I, when you I do bowled. a lot of bowling? No, I've never done a lot of Not a big bowler? Not a big bowler. Not My big. fingers are too big. Yeah, true. <laughs> Just throw it over him. <laughs> I, I was usually about 2 in the morning. I was being thrown <laughs> over him. Did they have bowling in Saskatchewan? Little, pe little pens in Canada. Oh, candle pens like? Yeah. Candlepin bowling. That's big in the box. <laughs> Three and a half to go here in the first period. Back goes DeArnay. Hockey leaves it for him. Callahan. Aggressive four check by the Bulldogs. Flyers can't get out of their zone. Makai. Sweep check away by DeArnay. Whacking. Anderson, no look shot. Goal! He gives the defending champions a 1-0 lead The Tampa Bay Lightning drop him. That's a Duluth goal right there. It's a greasy goal. They just won battles in front of the net. They won the, the battle for real estate. Puck went off two or three players. Doesn't matter. Goaltender lost sight of it. Good shot from the point. There's the battle one. There's the D jumping in. Anderson shot from the point. Doesn't get it blocked. Wow. You see all the bodies in front there. Great job. That's exactly how they score. They don't score pretty goals. They score those goals where it's a physical battle, and they usually win that physical battle. And Casper Bjorkvist, who's one of the most responsible players for this Providence Friars team, he gets caught over on the wall, Barry. As you saw that switch, he got caught doing yep. a little bit of puck watching, and the refs are actually taking a look at this one right now. Every goal in the NCAA tournament has to be cleared. So they're going to go ahead and, and take a look at this one. Yeah, maybe possible goalie, goalie bumping here. We yep. see he's close to being in the crease. That looks good to me. Well, maybe the overhead can give maybe, us an idea. Maybe Kepke in front of the net. Great shot by Anderson. Didn't get it blocked. Bouncing around. He's in the crease. He makes contact. Yeah, but he's just like a toe in the crease. Being in Buffalo, we know what that means. Yeah, we nothing. saw Brett Hull score a goal that didn't count. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is. I think this, this is could be. I, I agree. think it could be overturned. When they're looking at this, guys, it's important to note they're looking to see did he make it? Could the goaltender not play his position? Did he affect his ability to move in his space? And there was an opportunity there where he did. His foot was in the crease. He affected hockey's ability to do his job and play his position. So this is a challenging call, but Butchie, I'm with you. This one might be coming back. Because he kind of wedged himself in between Callahan and Hockey, yeah, and, I, and he made yeah, contact, he's got, and he, he was in the paint. But he can fight for position. But he, not in the paint, he can't. That's a little bit of paint. Let's check how much paint he was in. Yeah, right that's there. A, that's he's, about a brush. See, I, that's a fly brush worth. Don't forget, <laughs> there was no disallowed goal marked by the referees, so it has to be uh, total proof that there was interference. I mean, he's definitely affecting Hockey's ability to move. I don't know. I'm going to say that they're going to wave that off. I think they're going to wave this off, too. I think Two to one, Barry. When well, I'm not a, I've stage. never been a follower, so I'm saying that's a good goal. <laughs> All right. Well, I was great last week. I, I owned the I owned the uh, game last week, so we'll see. We're never going to hear the end of this one if we're wrong. I go o, if I go 3-0 and o against you two guys, man. <laughs> Chris Samarga, Mike Schubert, they're the Atlanta Hockey Association Referees who are looking at that monitor that Colby talked about. See, I don't think he was in, in the crease very much, but I also think he was pushed and held. See, I don't think he was pushed. I thought he wedged himself there. But he's got a right for dis he's got a right for not, space not in front of the net too. Not through the paint though. Yeah, not in the blue paint. The goaltender oh. gets to establish himself in the blue paint. And if you affect his ability to play his position, they get sent, you know, that that's part of the rule. That's what they're looking at. And Barry, you mentioned the fact that they did call it a good goal. So it's always harder to overturn that, but I, I'm sticking with what I think. I, I think this one is going to come back, and they're taking a good yes. long look at it for a reason. It is close. It's so close. I can see. I can see what there, you mean, Barry. But right there, that's, at, that's my concern. There, his heel is in the crease. That's a heel's a heel, Barry. Why are oh. we going to have rules? <laughs> I don't want rules. I want him to go in there and battle for positioning in front of the goaltender. 
And that's exactly what he did. That's a great shot by Kepke to get that puck and sweep it in by hockey. And like Colby mentioned, they're obviously perplexed at this what to do. Because that's why it's taken so long. And they're this, this game is still supposed to be a physical game. You're supposed to be able to battle for space. It's not, you don't just give that goaltender a free line to the puck so he can see that every time he comes, you got to score goals like this or we'll never have uh, any goals in games. I'm not saying you're wrong, Barry. I'm just saying what the rule is, and based on what the rule is, I think that's what I see. I'm not debating whether I think that, look, that's, sh you know, in all reality, you're right. Nobody ran anybody over through the crease, and there was no malice in that play, but this is what the rule says. Fans so are like, we have to see. Uh, fans are I, like, get on with it. This is taking a long time. That means that the, uh, my argument has some merit. <laughs> it means it's not a slam dunk. No, oh, no, it's, no, not it's not a slam definitely dunk. not. I think they want to overturn it, but they're just not sure. And the crowd's like, all right, give yourself a 60 second limit. Make a decision <laughs> either way. But again, these, these are gigantic decisions because the first goal of these games well, again, are so important. It could be the low, winning goal. Easy, the easily be the winning goal, without a doubt. It's the lowest scoring NCAA tournament since we've gone to this format. But Ke Kepke is, is that type of guy. He scores big goals. Why? Because he goes to that area. He's not scared to go to that area. You saw him fighting off the defense, but he also knew where the puck was, Here we go. when it would come there. Here's the let's decision. Go, let's go. The, heads, the headsets are off. Will they point? Or will they wave off? Five minutes of real time. A point or a wave off? As opposed to what other kind of time? Barry has a point. I got a wave off. Ah! All right. No goal. Brendan Sheehy, of course, is part of that replay official. From Estero, Florida. Longtime hockey might, participant. Maybe a few more minutes of real time here. <laughs> I think Mr. Sandlin is a little angry. Again, Kepke makes that initial contact and not really gets pushed into. He gets wedged between two players, and they felt that hockey would, was not able to push off. Okay. And there's the reaction from the young 20-year-old, and Hayden's like, whew. Hayden, Hayden knows he got away with one right there. It was close. So that's the second puck that has gone behind Hayden hockey that has been disallowed in the first period. First, if, there was a quick whistle, and then that very close call of goaltender interference. You might think that's a, an omen if you're that type of person worried about things like that. That could be an omen. And just to clarify, that's not a penalty. We're still five on five here with 3.20 left in the opening frame of the Frozen Four. Game two, UMass and Denver coming up later on ESPN. But again, just to get back to what, about Duluth, they're winning those battles in front of the net now. They're getting those goal scoring chances in front of the net. Hey, some room for Providence. Duhane, big wagon of a winger, comes out left side. Tough angle shot, saved by Shepard. Puck is sitting on the goal line, squirts out. But out of danger nicely there by Peter Krieger. Finally, Providence gets some daylight and a shot. Yeah, but Wolf took him right to the side. The shot was from the side. It was a harmless shot, basically. So good defense. He was in a little bit of a hole there. He just took the angle on the man, got him in the corner. Worked by Conway with Tyce Thompson. He's been kind of quiet so far. Big blocker save on Callahan by Shepard. That's one of their best shots. Oh! Another big hit in the corner. Almost a well, they're, le they're letting them play, John. The refs are letting them play. Bodies are hitting the floor. Prunovich. I just took a snow shower. Careful. Oh, that'll wake you up. They are dead. Keep that water off that new coat. You're not sure how it'll react. Here comes Louis Rail. Really hard hitting, tight checking. Couple of hits that sometimes are called penalties. Only the one so far, the one power play by Minnesota Duluth. Good breakout. Great breakout by Duluth. Richards, chip and chase, but he's going to go change. So great move by Bryson to quickly turn and get the puck back up north. He sensed that he was going to change and have some daylight. Shot wide by McDermott. Four checking in now. Behind the net. Friars trying to get something going. Their zone time has been minuscule on the offensive end. Tough, he's got to get that out. That's his job. He's a winger. He can't lose that puck battle. Josh Wilkins out there. Puck sent back in. Yorkquist goes after it. He gets a big hit in the corner. Long pass up. Nice long pass by Sandberg. He makes a real nice first pass. Number four in white. Strong player. And here come the Flyers again. Again, two rest of four checkers. See the layers? One guy, two guys, three guys. You got to beat a number of guys before you even get a chance to dump the puck in. Great job. Chip and chase in front. Neat little play. Almost worked. But it goes to the corner. 
Callahan towards the net. Easy save, Shepard. Sukumari turns. Loose in front. Bouncing around between the hash marks, but the Bulldogs survive. Under a minute left here. No! No! Oh, bouncing puck towards hockey. Again, our intermission crew is here in Buffalo. John Brickley and Dave Starman. Sean Richland, who won two national championships at Michigan here in Buffalo. Sean grew up in nearby Rochester, so it's a bit of a homecoming for him. Conway, toe drag! Him checked out of the way by Wolf. The puck is lifted out. That's a great hip check. You don't see those hippers much anymore. Duhame. Boy, players are starting to get their head up in the neutral zone. They're anticipating getting trucked. You get it, you lift it up, or you lose it. Those are the two things that happen in the neutral zone in this game. The other thing not helping, guys, the ice and the snow starting to build up and the puck bouncing a lot. And when you get into one of these physical games, you look down to make sure that one extra second to collect a puck, and that can mean trouble. And right now, we're really seeing that with 14 seconds left. And here's the one that goes right off the stanchion, bounces in on Hayden Hockey. He has a hard time controlling it. So let's keep an eye on the ice as we move through these games. Colby, that, that's because of the warm weather outside. We're having a nice problem. <laughs> yeah, what are we in, Tampa? <laughs> 43 degrees outside in Buffalo today. Nice spring day. We'll get to 60 tomorrow on the off day. Puck loose in front. Province is actually out shooting the Bulldogs 9-8. It doesn't feel that way. So kind of an interesting first period. Two pucks that went in the net that didn't count. Lots of hard hits. Just kind of a Weird, disjointed first period, Barry. Well, obviously, if you're Duluth, you like the period. I know Sandlin wanted more speed and, uh, through the neutral zone. Every coach does. But it started right with Wolf there. He had a fantastic period uh, right there. Rail had a great hit in the neutral zone. Tufty threw a big check in that area. He, he just a great job. Great work down low. Great physical play. So the two disallowed goals by the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs have kept the Friars still scoreless with the defending champions. Jacob Bryson is a Buffalo Sabre draft pick playing in Buffalo. He's with Quint. Jacob, take me back to the bus ride over and you take the ice tonight, frozen for What emotions? What do you deal with? What's it like? Yeah, it's just so exciting. I know our team's so excited and it's very emotional, but uh, I think we overcame that tonight and we got off to a good start there, but uh, Duluth's a very good team, so it's going to be a good test for us. How do you best characterize the hitting in the neutral zone? Yeah, well, we haven't played a team from the H uh, NCHC in a while, so they're a, they're a good hitting team. I mean, we took a few there in the first period, but I think we got, got after them too, and uh, it's going to be a physical game. Thanks, Jacob. All right, thanks. Link things upstairs to John Brickley and the rest of our crew here on site for this first intermission. John. Quint, we saw a battle of wills in that first period, plus we'll take a look at the second semifinal. Kale McCarr and upstart UMass looking to take down the traditional power in Denver. We'll set the stage for the second national matchup coming up on the other side of the break. No score in Buffalo. Ooh. Which lake is that, Barry? Very cold lake, John, somewhere in Ontario. <laughs> Cold, frigid, cold, lake wet, Erie. cold, wet lake. <laughs> Spring is late. The <laughs> Buffalo again. The defending champions, the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs and the Providence College Friars. No score after 20. Uh, heavy D was one oh, of my favorite heavy early D, 90 baby, rappers. Heavy D. One of my one favorite. of my favorite groups too. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how we could describe the first period. I love the first period. If they're all like that, I'll be very, very happy. You finish your checks and win battles in the first period to set teams up in the third period when they don't want to get hit anymore. And that was a great start right here by Duluth. Wolf started it all off with a great hit, lowered his shoulder, didn't take a penalty. Uh, you got to be very, very careful against Providence because they got such a good power play. But everybody was doing it. And again, that will pay off in the third period. The player will go back to the puck and say, I don't want to get hit by Wolf ever again. And there'll be a loose puck and they'll score on that. Lose puck. Great job right there. Great start by Duluth. Hayden Hockey. No score after one. Colby Cohen between the benches with us here at the Frozen Four. Colby, what, what did your view look like down there? Yeah, one of the challenges when you play against this Providence Friars team is they make it very challenging to get through the neutral zone with any type of speed. And Scott Sandel and the coach for UMD was preaching to his team to support pucks, but you can see them all stacked along the blue line. They all come back so hard and they want to get that transition game. And if you're Duluth, you don't want to stop behind the net and set the porch 
check because then you do not have the capability to get through the neutral zone with speed. You see Providence, five men back, and they're just dumping pucks in. If you're Duluth, the counter guys, short support plays, come up together and move the puck quick. There's Jacob Bryson. He's a fine offensive player. Providence would hope he's some sort of fuel injector here for the back end to try to get some more grade A chances on Hunter Shepard here with a clean sheet of ice in Buffalo. I, I think Providence knows they're lucky to come out of that period 0-0, so they usually take advantage of uh, teams that you let hang around. John Butchergoss, Barry Melrose, Colby Cohen, Quint Kesnick is ringside. He talked with Scott Salen. We'll hear what he told Quint in a second here on our first whistle in Buffalo. Hunter Shepard behind his own net. There's that stretch pass. All the way down to Cates. Right around the whole rink. That was smart play. Fortunately, his teammates were changing, so they couldn't take advantage of that. DeArnay will look to headman the puck up. He does. Yorkwist chips it in behind Shepard. The neutral zone has been very clogged here in Buffalo. There's been hard hitting. Players are starting to kind of take a peek when they're in between the blue lines. Tip in front, save Shepard. Backhander. That was blocked by Wolf. Stolen by Mackay. So a decent couple of chances for the Friars as Mackay just gets it out of danger. He had no options left. Callahan takes his time. No. DRNA dumps it in. The Friars are changing all five players. Yes, it did during the change. Wrist shot, blocker saved by Hockey. Here come the Friars out. Three on three, Hockey. Dugan, backhand pass. O'Neill was stopped, so he had no momentum. He rides his defenseman into the corner. Young goes to the opposite corner. Lemos has it. Back to the point. Friars are set up. Shepard never saw that. It went wide. Another shot. It hit Shepard. That hit Shepard. He didn't see that one at all, John. That deflected into his face. Young took a surprising shot. Good start here for Providence. They've really got the jump right now. They've been the, the faster, hungrier club early. And back comes Sandberg. Been on the U.S. World Junior Team. Dumps Solid. it around. Solid D, man. Solid D. Just looks like a pro in person and here on the ice in Buffalo. Tate really wheel for Providence. Number eight in black. Takes it. Backhand. Bad angle shot, but it was off a piece of Shepard. Now we got some end to end action going back and forth. Puck into the crowd. Quint Kesnick, what did Scott Sandlin say to you? Well, he'd like to see his team play more northern, he said. Play more north and get pucks behind. I asked him about the physical nature of this game, and he says, well, this is clearly our identity. It has been. He said, our guys like to step up in the neutral zone. He said, you better keep your head up, especially when Nick Wolf, number five, in white is involved, Fuji. Now the Friars outshot UMD 9-8 to eight in the first period. Probably most of those shots came late. They didn't have a lot of shots early in the, in the period, so. No power plays yet for the Friars. And Bulldog the would one. like to keep it that way. UMass and Denver play the second game of our doubleheader today here on ESPN2. That's going to be icing on the Friars. That was a smart play right there by Duluth. They kicked it back into the neutral zone and went up the other board. That was close to being a real good scoring chance. One missed pass. Uh, if that thing would have connected, that would have been a great scoring chance. Faceoffs in the first period, the Bulldogs were much stronger. They were 11 and 5. And this is one of those situations where they were winning faceoffs in the offensive zone, and they had the puck in their end for a while because of this situation right here. So Krieger. Number 25 will go head to head here and try to win this faceoff from Conway. 50 50 faceoff goes to the corner. Oh, Krieger gets it. Krieger won it. Good stick there by Davis Buns, and the Friars get it out. Thompson on side. Tice Thompson, brother of Cage Thompson, who played his college hockey at UConn. Yeah, their dad, Brent, played for me uh, in Los Angeles, so I, I, I know Brent very well. Yeah. His dad's a coach uh, in, in uh, Bridgeport. Conway! It's a nice pass to Duhane. Didn't have an angle, though. You see how the Bulldogs do a great job, Barry, keeping Providence to the outside. They can't get good angle no, shots. They just uh, really play almost like a zone defense. They just have their sticks in the, in the passing lane, so you can't make passes, and uh, you just have to dump it in the corner and go and get it. Young steps up in front to try to steal that pass. He let's, does. Let's put it this way. It's not going to be a pretty goal to score against Duluth. I can guarantee you that. What's going on down there, Colby? Pretty quiet between the two benches right now. And I think the physicality has actually subsided a little bit. We haven't seen as many big hits this period. But 
one thing that is really noticeable, both these teams, the way their defensemen gap up and hold the blue line, making it challenging on the other group of forwards to really get anything going. Back come the Bulldogs. Cole Kepke, he had a disallowed goal in the first period for a little goalie interference. Here the Bulldogs took a 1-0 lead. Another goal was disallowed for a Seemed like a bit of a quick whistle, but the whistle definitely blew before the puck went in. Duluth is getting that stretch pass, but there's only one player up at that where the uh, the puck ends up. Everyone else is changing. They haven't been able to get two or three guys on the ice to make that play pay. That comes from Matt Anderson. Neutral zone. Tate is out there. Great play by McDermott there, standing in the neutral zone where he should be. Good stick by Bryson. The back of the Bulldogs. Miller is ridden off nicely by Buns. Tate. A lot of speed. Here he comes, number eight. Backs off the D. Wrist shots well wide. Sukumarin can't find the puck. Comes all oh, the way outside man. the zone. Indian rubber ball right there. Buns throws it back in. Shepard going to cover up with Tate providing some pressure. How important is it for scoring first, especially with these two well-coached teams? Boy, if they score oh. on you, you're chasing the game, and you don't usually catch them. Well, that's what I mean. Duluth has had the, the goals already disallowed, so they certainly feel something's owed to them. But Providence has hung around, hung around. Now if they score the first goal, you see how dangerous they are, what a solid defensive team they are. And again, you've got to think they're going to get at least one power play in this game. Right. And that's a wicked power play they got. They need to win this faceoff here. At every every faceoff. They get bigger and bigger as the time goes lower and lower. See if Conway can backhand it right to Tice Thompson for a quick shot. He's at the top of the circle. Keep so, your eye on Callahan too, but you, a lot of times they use that guy as the decoy and they'll slide it. You see Callahan leaking in a little bit. So, oh. Getting lots of help from the wingers. The centerman's getting lots of help. That's what has to happen. They are nay. Eliminates Krieger. People think it's the centerman's job to win the draw clean. It's not. His job is not to lose the draw clean and get help from the wingers or the defensemen on the circle. Here comes the prize. Length of 11, two on one. Conway and Duhame. Oh, the pass across. What a stick by Perunovic to break up that two-on-one pass. It was a late developing situation, and the Friars almost had their first golden opportunity. Yeah, Wolf got caught in a race in a neutral zone, and a big defenseman like that isn't going to win that race very often. So a two-on-one was created, and you're right, Perinovich made a great defensive play. I said he's one of the best offensive players in the nation. Right here, that's a great defensive play. Stick on the ice. He read it. Look at that. He read it. Saw the eyes, where it was going, it's going to the side. That's an excellent defensive job. Yeah, and a great job by Perunovic to know that the shooter there is on his right side, so doesn't have a great angle and is forced to throw that away. A good defenseman, Barry, as you know, baits the forward into making that pass every single time. I wouldn't mind seeing a shot right there. The other guy can always score in the rebound if a, if a rebound comes off the pads. If that isn't a sure pass across to that uh, your buddy going to the far post, throw a good wrister at the net, something the goaltender will have trouble high handling, and then you got a nice little juicy rebound. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the NCAA Bowling Championships this Saturday, 6.30 Eastern, ESPN Youth. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA Championships. NCAA doing a great job hosting the Frozen Four in Buffalo. The rink looks beautiful. Great pregame show. Love the Frozen Four logo here with Buffalo. Great pregame meal too, huh? Off oh. the, the heels of a Steve Greeley, the assistant GM for Buffalo. Recommendation. Chef's chicken parm. Makai! Glove save and a beauty by hockey. We're all amped up on chicken parm and baked spaghetti. We're ready to go all night on ESPN2. ESPN Plus Boxing, my favorite, Lomachenko up against Krola Friday night, 11 Eastern, Holloway, Poirier Saturday night, 10 Eastern, both title fights exclusively on ESPN Plus in English and Spanish. Get ESPN Plus, it is awesome for college hockey fans and sports fans in general. While these two head coaches here, their schools quite simply had never enjoyed the kind of national championship success until they arrived. And look at the wins in the last five seasons. Only Mike Hastings of Minnesota State has more than Nate Leenan and Scott Sandlin. Barry, they have to 
you know, they go on visits. They do a little bit of recruiting themselves because, you know, the, their school is all they're the they're closers. They're the going to close. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Nate Lehman with BU and BC in his backyard, he's got to do more of that. Scott, maybe not quite as much because his program is really starting to get a stamp. But there's still a lot of schools fighting for players Absolutely. in Minnesota. So. No doubt. The Gophers and St. Cloud are the great year this year. Bottom line is they've both done an unbelievable job of uh, probably the, the two best coaches in college hockey today. Certainly right among the elite. And here they are again in the Frozen Four. Six straight tournaments for the Friars. Three straight Frozen Fours for the Bulldogs trying to win back-to-back -back titles. Perunovic back at the point. Another glove save by Hawk. He might have gone wide as Conway has a couple of shots. Oh, and a whack from Perunovic. Don't be stupid. You can't, can't give a power play up in a nothing-nothing game. Just calm them down. You can't. You got to be on that bench. You got to be calming each other down. Let them do whatever they want to us. Spear us, slash us. We can't take a penalty in this game against that power play. And again, shot in front of the net. You got to let that go. You can't worry about it. There's the cross check. Pretty easy again. Four on four right there. Also, you got it. The bigger prize is what's more important. Winning the game is way more important than taking a slash or a spear or anything. You just got to keep your mouth shut and skate away. Friars finally win a faceoff. Kavanaugh too far. This could be icing. So, Barry, the grandkids are watching? Yep, Cooper and Colton, my grandkids, six and four. They love hockey. Uh, they love ESPN, obviously. And they uh, text me that they were watching the game. So, uh, we'll have a blast. They, they love watching games. And hopefully, someday they'll be playing college hockey in the Why United not? States. Why not? Gramps says hi, his kids, here from Buffalo. Are they in Florida still or are they back home? They're, they're in Stowe now. All right, back in Vermont. They took their sunburn home. Nice. Not much happening here in the second period. Tight checking. We showed you the record when these teams score first. They're nearly unbeatable, so they both know it's so important. Got to play a little careful at times. They know the record. You're right, John. Anderson gets it back in behind the net. Good cycle. That's, that's what you need to do right there. Cycle. Both teams need to play like this. Latteroo, Cates, and Tufty out there. Here's Latteroo, number 13. Here's Big Riley Tufty, six foot six inches. Back to the point. Wrist shot. Wide of hockey. Lot is on that. Callahan's hit. Friars are penned in. Tufty with the hit. Bad angle shot. Latteroo. Good job by hockey to be disciplined on his post. Big hit by Rail again. Rail's having a great game. He is. Wow. Louis Rail, the sophomore from Eden Prairie. He's fired up. Makai brings it in. Whoa, there's a hit at the line by Bjorkwish. Shot go! And the Bulldogs get the all-important first goal. Justin Richards, who didn't score a goal all of last year, on the way to the team winning the national championship, gets his 11th of the year. Okay, you better go over and make sure it counts first before you celebrate too much. Again, Rail made that play happen in the neutral zone with that body check. That created the loose puck. Then Makai made the great play, carrying the puck into the zone right here. Then the little give and go. Makai got uh, knocked down, knocked sideways, but he took the checker out of the play. And that's that's a goal, Colby, that the goaltender has to make. You can't let that go in in a game like this. Yeah, hockey's going to want that one back. He saw it all the way, and you're right, Butchie. <laughs> Barry, sorry, guys. I almost just took a stick in the chops there by the Orpheus, but you're right. They'll want that one back. That went right between the legs of Callahan and then right through hockey. And the Shoot the puck, baby. Shoot the puck. It's never the wrong play. Defending chance. Get the all-important first one. Young had a chance for a turnover. Kind of rushed the shot. And it's three on two the other way. Here comes Kepke. And the Friars come back with a few numbers. See if they can create something here. Dugan to Wilkins. This is the big line. But Bjorkvist goes and change. Parker Mackay, the man with the puck, who kind of made that happen. He's the one who had the entry. He put the pressure on the defense and left it for Richards. 1-0 now here in Buffalo. UMass and Denver next on ESPN2. That, that's a great line. Kepke, Richards, Mackay, that is an excellent line. Mackay is the captain of this team, leader of this team. You can certainly see why. He scored an overtime winner already in the regional sport. Team scoring first in the tournament's 9-3. and three. So three teams have come on, including, of course, the Friars, who are down 3 nothing. So if any team could certainly <laughs> go against that record, it is the, it is the Friars. Oh, yeah. one nothing. that's nothing. Excellent. Across the line. Leaves it. Roth. Kobe Roth goes behind the net, number 10. Bryson takes him up. There's a loose twig on the ice. It's interfering with play right now. First ball for Wolf, DDD to Perunovic, head up, back to Wolf, they're stretched out far, wrist shot, easy catch save, 
by hockey. So Colby Cohen, it's the Bulldogs who strike first. Just a real heads up play by this offensive line. And Justin Richards on, on the near side though. Sorry, Cole Kepke, number 17. Watch him holding the line on the near side as Makai is able to weave his way through traffic. A lot of times as a forward enters the zone and starts moving lateral, it'll throw the wingers off. But a great play there by Kepke. A smart heads up play to hold that line. It's little, it doesn't show up on the score sheet, but it's a big time play in a big time game guys yeah you're right guys will start that crossover move to try to get some momentum to get to the net but he knew he didn't matter at that point the play was too far from him like Colby said that's kind of a standard of, of bulldog hockey do those little smart things don't go offside there there's no need to go offside there. you're exactly right but I still like Grail standing up and drilling that guy in the neutral zone that have to Wolf back there Thompson rides him to the boards Duhane, big strong play, turns it over, gets it, now Thompson, this line's got to go. This yes. second line's got to create some stuff. You're not mentioning their names at all. Block shot, Callahan recovers well to stop Krieger. And here comes Spencer Young, the junior from Brentwood, New Hampshire. It's 106 game as a fryer. Pulled from behind, nothing Number. called. Here comes Kepke, he's got Mackay! Just shot wide. He's almost shooting that to get a rebound. He's going for that far pad and the butterfly just hoping that the bully kicks it out in the slot. It might have even been a shot pass, Barry, from yeah. down here. It looked yep. like Makai was leaning on that stick, and that looked like it was somewhere between a shot and a pass. It definitely was. It was going for the far post. It was going for the pad. Makai's pass is picked off. He's trying to go through the defense, and a good job there by Brian Lemos to steal it. Bulldogs have a little bit of swagger now. They got the lead. They can maybe yeah. be a little more loose and free. Long passes are working much better in the neutral zone now. Uh, Providence doesn't always have the five guys back the way they did in the first period. Providence could really use a power play, but again, this is a disciplined team, and they're going to try to stay out of the box. It's one thing Scott Sandlin told us yesterday. We met with him and all the teams and players. Sign of respect, Johnny. They got a great power play. You got to respect that, and they do. Tate's got the speed we told you about. Going to try to chip and chase that. It's icy. He didn't gain the red line. Let's take a look at this. What we're uh, Colby and I were talking about was this a pass? I think it was a shot for the far post there on the ice, hoping the goaltender would kick that left pad out mm -hmm. and throw it into the slot area. It wasn't really a shot to score, Colby. So I, I think we're sort of both talking about the same thing there. Yeah, definitely. You can see on the replay there. Nice job by our crew to light that up and just looking for that far pad. That's something that you practice throughout the week. There's always one or two drills mixed in when you're getting into these playoff stretches because you know the goals are hard to score and you know they were close to getting another one there. Yeah the Friars call a timeout here. Nate Lehman for whatever reason uh, is going to call a timeout. Interesting time to right. do it. It's obviously something important because you don't burn a timeout in the second period when you're down one nothing. You might need that later. Maybe it's just for a simple rest because uh there was an icing they could not they change. did have yeah I get you could that's how much he knows this is an important uh, face off you can't lose this draw clean with with tired guys on the ice well I think they're starting to sense right now things are getting away from them it's only one nothing but UMD they're starting to really open things up we saw the goal and then a couple chances that we just showed you so this is a good move I think by Nate Lehman to kind of bring his guys in have a chat settle things down a little bit and Try to tell him, guys, it's just one nothing here. It might feel tilted, but we're one shot out of this thing. Colby, this is where you need to put that uh, uh, Wilkins line out there with Dugan and uh, Bjornquist. They're, they've been the best players. They've scored 46 goals this year. They've been your leaders offensively. They're big physical players. This is where those guys have to go out and turn the tide, get things going back uh, in Providence's direction, get some scoring chances. And here they come. I keep going to go with Prince. Well, it was an icing, wasn't it? So they had to keep the same. Now they could yep. change off the timeout. So they got O'Neal, Prince, Dayarnay's out there. So he's going to try to win this face. Yep. They were dominated on the dot. 16 to 11. Decent one there, 50-50, and they're able to get out. See if they can get something going here. Prince goes around. Hit behind. So there's a heavy fork check now. Off the timeout, they got some jump. Kavanaugh behind the net, good work. Grab, he lost control of the puck as he tried to sneak behind the short side and tuck it in. Big speed by Kobe Roth. 
Rogers is a nice defensive play there, though, the body position to get between his man. And he goes back to get it now. Number five behind Hayden Hockey. Game two is UMass and Denver. The best college hockey player this year, Kel McCarr, and the UMass Minutemen, their first Frozen Four game in school history against one of the most storied resumes in college hockey history, the Denver Pioneers. Here's the Wilkins line right here. This is the line they need to get going. Yorkwood steps on the ice with Dugan. Dugan. Excellent playmaker. What a pass to Bjorkwist, who's looking to shoot. Penalty, first power play, Friars. Cross-checking, coming up against the Bulldogs. So the break that the Friars needed. Once the Bulldogs score first in Justin Richards, they knew they better get the next one, and they're going to have the chance to do that when we return. Richards the goal, but a penalty by Minnesota Duluth. And when we come back, the Friars will have a power play with a chance to tie. Bulldog hockey before they hired Scott Sandlin in March of 2000. Before he arrived, two conference titles. Since, three. Before him, four NCAA tournament appearance in 56 years. In just 19, nine. Frozen four appearances, two before he got there, five after. And before him, no national championships, now two and counting. But now his team is a man short and going on the penalty kill. Quinn Kesting. Coach, uh, what is most critical in terms of your penalty killing? Well, it starts with the win and the draw, but you know, again, you know, they they, are, they had a great power play last weekend. They're riding a lot of confidence, so we just got to make sure, you know, we're not getting too running around. We, we're paying attention. If we can get clears, I think exits are going to be huge, and you know, we're going to have to eat some bucks and maybe get a save. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. The Friars have tied it up. Josh Wilkins. They win the draw. They did an excellent job of moving the puck around, led by their quarterback, Jacob Bryson, and the man, Barry, who really had to score, did. Yeah, he's the best player, best offensive player, has been uh, ever since he's been there. Just a great job winning the draw. Now you got control of it. This is a movement right here. He goes down and then back into the middle of the rink right here. Wide open before the checker can get to you. Now it's puck movement, rebound comes right out to Wilkins, and you can't give a goal scorer like that half the net, and that's exactly what happened. Great work in front of the net, good bodies in front of the net, and there's the wide open 6 by 4 Great goal. And you love the puck movement by Providence, Barry. Like you mentioned, they're able to get the puck down low, they break the box, and then all of a sudden Bryson, the guy who runs that yeah. power play, he's got all that poise, he's moving it right away. This is a power play that will never go stale because it's pucks are moving and feet are moving, and that's why they're six for nine on their last 15 power plays, guys. I know what'll happen now too is Duluth's got to be more careful with, with taking a penalty because this power play is so good. It, it hurts your physical game if you're scared to take a penalty. And they're careful there in the corner. There comes Bryson. We mentioned he's one of the most electric defensemen in the country. Number 18. Careful. Not, oh, they do call him offside. That was close. Let's go back to the goal, Barry. And really good little plays. Those extra little passes. You see players at all levels of hockey. Number 9, Brandon Duhane. Yeah, that's 51. That's the one I like right there out into the middle. It got the box moving and then goes out to the point. Bouncing in front of the net. Good play right there. Mm -hmm. Kicking it out. And Wilkins gets it, and, and again, he's got to finish the shot off, but he had half the net. Goal scorers don't miss half the net. So, but again, there was four or five really good plays made with winning the draw. So that's why the power play is so good, like Colby said. And now all of a sudden, that timeout that Nate Lehman called, breathe a little bit of life back into his group, and he looks like he knows what he's doing yeah. there, guys. We talk about how he's really one of the premier coaches for stuff like that. Great heel for the game, ultra competitor. He played hockey and water polo in college. He likes difficult things. I would have done that too if we didn't have a water polo team. Yeah. We didn't really have a pool. No, no. not in Saskatoon. No, the, horse, no. the horses can't swim in Saskatoon. <laughs> Save in front. Good bounce and good shot there. Good traffic. Shepard's under siege right now. Yeah. The Friars got played to look at Tate off the wall. Walks in. Stick handles. Can't quite finish it, and Exel's going to chip it out, but Callahan keeps it in. Rail made that play. Defenseman walks in along the boards. Rick shot bad angle. Shepard didn't see that one either. Conway uses his stick. Duhane with a shove, and the Friars suddenly have life. They've tied the game, and they have some jump. He's going to lose my knee. Oh! Oh. Big hit there. Thompson goes into the boards. 
right now we need the pushback. Duluth needs to push back. They got to start winning some battles. Get their big boys on the ice with the puck. Thompson, carry the mail. Try to get it deep, but he can't. And Bryson throws it. Thompson has it back again. Good stick work by these defensemen of Minnesota Duluth. Momentum is so crazy in sports. Duluth had it for a while, now they've lost it. Providence has it. Save, puck is loose, but covered by hockey as he's got all kinds of bodies in front of him, but he makes the save. Shots are getting through, but goalies are seeing them. If the goalie sees the puck, he's gonna stop it. Saw it the whole way, good box out there right there by the defenseman, by Providence, excellent job. Keep the man to the outside, let the goaltender have his eyes. And he'll stop just about every one of those that he sees. That shot was right in front of me, and there was daylight. I could see what Anderson was seeing at that far side of the net, so credit Hayden Hockey for getting out, moving across. He took about two steps, two little shuffle pushes on the top of that crease, and he does a nice job controlling the rebound. You like seeing that if you're Providence. Another face-off win for UMD. Makai, bad angle shot. Hockey got a piece of that. He was trying to protect the upper short side of the net. Another pass in front looking for a deflection or a bad or good bounce. These kind of games, these low scoring tight games, you start shooting from anywhere hoping to get that, that kind of goal because there's just not a lot of great A chances. Yorkwish tries to dig it out, he does. Not icing, just tipped lines and rolls. Richards falls down, he's the goal scorer for the Bulldogs. Princeton was open momentarily in front, but get the puck to him. Friars recycle. O'Neill and Prince, but it's fired back in wide of Shepard. He'll cover and a face-off will be to his right. Hey, this reminder for the 12th consecutive year, ESPN has the exclusive first and second round coverage today and tomorrow of the Masters. Coverage has already started today and continues until 7:30 Eastern on ESPN Well, as well as streaming live on the ESPN app. The Masters at Augusta on ESPN. Brooks Kepka is currently your leader at five under par. Ian Poulter, Bryson DeChambeau also playing well in Georgia. Here we're tied at one. Late second period, John Butchergrass, Barry Melrose, Colby Cohen between the benches. Quick casting ringside, getting plenty of information for us here in Buffalo. 1-1 one, one against these two excellent defensive teams. Tip in front by Prince. Lemos. It's like they changed jerseys, man. Lemos wrap around, pull down. No penalty coming. Sukumarin. He's a low behind the net. Sukumarin protects the puck. Tries to turn and shoot towards it. Up at it in front is Prince. Fire fans are screaming for a penalty. They don't get it. Prince between his legs. Sukumarin back to Prince. And oh, nifty play, but a great job by Nick Wolf with his stick to break it up. Here's Tate. And the Friar since that timeout. Callahan, he shoots a knuckle puck. Didn't quite get to Shepard. Tuffy's going to try to get it out, and he will. Not he sure if there's enough momentum for icing. It's not. They need a change. Get fresh bodies on there. That's when you take a penalty. Both teams change in full there. Roth tries to get it back in. He does. Here comes Kobe Roth. Off a turnover. Roth. Check from behind by Conway. Kick save, but it's right out in the middle of the hash mark. Three by the front. Hockey is down. Circle, rail shot is blocked. John, that was the exact same play that Colby and I were talking about where you shoot at the pad for a rebound. Penalty right in front of the net. The ref got that behind the play. A cross check on Providence. Not one you're gonna like away from the play. Oh, Greg Prince is gonna go to the box. Big save by Hayden Hockey. A mosh pit of bodies in front of him, but for the moment he survives. But when we come back, the Bulldogs are going on their second power play. Two disallowed goals, guys, and two allowed goals. Yeah, they see the whistle went a little early right there. Obviously, that was an easy call. They disallowed it. Uh, you, uh, Duluth, so that's no big deal. We'll have another chance right away. 
And a little bit later, here's the goal. Great shot. Great play by Makai at the blue line, but again, the goaltender's got to make that save. Well, then the Providence power play staying hot. They've been great in the NCAA tournament so far. And guys, they're one for one tonight. If you're Duluth, you better stay out of that penalty box. That was Wilkins tying the game. He's got a five-game scoring streak. Six but goals and five assists. It's like he just hot. got fast halfway through the second period. He got fast again. He lost his speed there for a while. Duhame and Bryson were the assisters on that goal. Mackay and Anderson assisted on the Richards goal. There's Greg Prince in the penalty box. Friars have killed their last seven power plays in the NCAA tournament. Brunovich is very dangerous, number seven. Sweeney's over here on the point, so they got four forwards buried out here. There's Perunovic, Krieger. We got a one-timer from this side with Anderson. Yep. Sweeney can shoot it. Kobe Roth is a good puck retriever. He's down low. You see big number 21, Noah Cates, the freshman Flyers draft pick there along the wall. He's 6'2", 185. So four forwards and Perunovic. There's Roth. We mentioned he's one of those good puck retrievers, good speed. Try to keep the cycle going. They're going to try to set up a slapper with Perunovic. Puck comes outside the zone. Just rolled over it's yeah, there. Yeah. You hate when that happens with the defenseman, but late in the period, you got to use your skate to back up your skate blade to avoid that. Friars, get it out. Right, Jeff Brunovic made a decision to pinch, but if that puck doesn't go down the ice, there could be easy to be a, a two on one going the other way for Providence. Providence doing a really nice job. As soon as the puck goes along that boards on the side wall, they are sending two and three bodies to outnumber Duluth, making it hard for them on the wall. They did it in the first period as well, so the Providence penalty kill doing a nice job. Good entry right there. The puck moved the puck very, very crisply. Went in there and outfought the players. Now they got a good setup here for uh, Duluth. Keep an eye on 39 and White. Parker Matai's had a good period. He's out there with Tufty and Sandberg. Also Mikey Anderson. 24 with the puck right now, and Richards the goal scorer. Wrist shot right into the belly of Hayden Hockey. Nope. Nobody in front, John. Nobody in front. He's seeing that puck. These goaltenders, if they see it, they're going to stop it. you got to put bodies in front where they have to at least look around. Right there, he saw it the whole way. You've got Riley Tufty on the ice for Duluth, who's about six foot eight on yeah. skates. He is a big body. He needs to go stand on the top of that crease and make it a little bit more challenging on Hayden Hockey. They can't move him. If he goes to front of that net with that wingspan, man, the goalie won't be able to have a chance to see in the puck. It's a good faceoff win by Duhane. He's a strong player. We visited him yesterday. Some of those guys are just, you know, they're thick and they're big and they're strong and they just look like a pro hockey player. He's a wild draft pick. Keep an eye on number nine in black. Right there, you lose the draw. It's 30 seconds before you get it in again. You can't lose draws like that on, when you have a power play in the other team's end. Ooh, that's danger. Saves it. Mikey Anderson down low. Two on one in front. Oh, just wide. It's Tufty as hockey came over. Makai again. One timer. Easy save by hockey there. Out of the box. Five on five hockey. Oh, it gets by Anderson, so Riley Tufty all alone in front of Hayden Hockey. And he put that pass on the, on the backhand of the player. He didn't need to. He could have put it on the forehand, let him walk to the middle. Here comes the Bulldogs. Watch out, Lateroo. It's tip. good stick work there by the, the Friars. And Michael Callahan, number 23, has had a strong game. Had a couple good chances on the power play. Obviously, Tufty's chance was by far the best. Conway deflects off the body into the Friar bench, but oh boy, let's take a look at that chance. Not sure if Hockey got a, he, don't think he got a piece no, of it. Tuffy just shot it wide. Yeah, he did just get shoot it wide, there's no doubt about it. Right here you're going to see the pass, Tufty oh. backs up, he's got room, put it on oh. his stick. Off the toe. He was just weak on the stick and yeah, went off the got, toe of his blade. You got to lower that bottom hand, you got to bear down when you're on the top of the crease. You see all of the best goal scorers. At all it, levels of hockey, they're good at leaning. They're heavy on their stick around the net, and he'll want that one back and have some nightmares about that one, Barry. Kobe, you see Sidney Crosby do that all the time. He always backs up his stick with his skate when he's around the net. That could have easily happened right there. Give him a much better chance to score. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, one of why he's one of the best yep. in the world. But, you know, you can take note from that when you see that happening. I mean, of course, we got the NHL playoffs going on right now, and it's a good lesson because, you know, there's not a lot of room out there on this ice. That is the term, lean on it, coach's screen. But he's going to lean on that stick. Shot wide, Jared Lucas Savage is of the uh, Denver Pioneers. We'll see him in game two. He does that so well down low. Shot, saved by Shepard. Sukumaran right in front, top of the paint. Friars are circling out. Look out, they got a chance. Rail hacking and whacking, number 26, John McDermott. 
But the Dermot still has it. Could have been a holding penalty there. It was easy. close. A little plus to the arm. Yep. One minute. One minute remaining. One minute remaining in the second period. Wilkins, the goal scorer, sends it back in for the Friars. Wake up, wake up. Now the loop has to get out of here, John. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Friars with it. In an early deficit, but to get that goal back so quickly. So key for them on their vaunted power play, which is just coming right now. Barry, we thought we'd see seven or eight goals tonight, didn't we? Yes, uh, yes we uh, <laughs> thought we were nine or ten. <laughs> Maybe the two games combined. Friars have a chance late to see if they can get something. Oh, great poke check. Krieger, but plenty of speed left in the tank. Well, you're, not gonna Dugan. you're not going to catch Dugan right there. Dugan lost his stick. Slashing, he won the slashing call. That should just about do it here. Puck comes to hockey with one more faceoff with 1.6 to go in the second period. Guys, Duggan just lo Dugan just lost his stick. It's down on the ice in front of me. He plays with a huge curve. I mean, that thing <laughs> is a big hook. As it's sitting on the ice, I feel like you could fit more than one golf ball <laughs> underneath that thing. Wow. Just so the ends don't touch, that's the only thing that matters. <laughs> What's the rule on that these days, Barry? Is it a golf ball under there still? Or no, what? there's no rule. You can make it as big as you want. You never <laughs> see that called. See if Richards get a quick face off and a shot. There it is. Doesn't get through. They had time for Kepke. But a block shot in front as Wolf and DeArnay go eyeball to eyeball as the second period comes to an end. Friars and the Bulldogs very tied to one. It's Richards and Wilkins. Yeah, right here. Shot from the side. Goaltender should have it. Uh, he saw it the whole way. That's got to be in the bank, Colby. You can't let that goal go in. Yeah, absolutely not. And then the Providence power play, the hottest in the nation right now, going to work. Great puck movement around the horn. You've got a shot. And then Josh Wilkins, the guy you want with the puck on the back door, finishing it off for Providence. Quinn Kesnick is with the Bulldog goal scorer, Justin Richards. Goal scorer and also a guy taking a lot of draws. What's the biggest challenge in terms of face-offs in this game? Yeah, well, you, they're, they're really hard team to play against. You know, they're... They're physical and then they're strong. So, you know, you got to be strong and bear down on the faceoffs here. What happened on your goal? I know it was a good play by Parker. He was weaving in the middle and he kicked it out to me and drove drove the middle. And I, I didn't see a play, so I just uh, threw it on that and luckily it went in. What's that feel like? <laughs> I know it's, it's special. Um, you know, playing in the Frozen Four, I mean, I'm going to cherish this moment. Every guy who's playing in this is going to cherish it. So, uh, it's definitely really special. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy winning. But we, we got a third period to take care of here. Special moment. John Brickley and our intermission crew upstairs. John. Quint, we saw big hits in period number one, big goals in game number two. We've got two goalies coming up in the regionals who were sensational, looking to lead their respective teams to a national championship. To Buffalo, New York. Semi-final game number one in that arena right there. 1-1 after 40 minutes. The Wendy Zamboni is here to give us a fresh sheet. And Wendy's is always there with fresh beef. Wendy's original hamburger of the NCAA and the official rival of frozen beef. That might be your best read ever. A tasty you second had, that, period. There was passion in you right I'm there. I'm a big I fan tell. of the beef. Yes, you, you know are. that. Yes, you are. Second period, Barry. Uh, we had a couple goals, and the first one was just really classic Duluth hockey. A little turnover in the neutral yeah. zone has worked the puck up. Yeah, I want to talk about Duluth. They didn't have a great period, obviously. Still 1-1, one, one, no problem going into third period. But they did do a couple good things in the second period. One of them is right here. Right, Rail stands up in the neutral zone, makes a great body check, another clean check. There's the loose puck. One pass up to Makai. Makai's gone. Creates an outnumbered chance. He comes flying through the neutral zone. Now Richards is on the far side of the rink. Mackay takes it to the middle. He takes it to the wall. Dumps it to Richards. Accepts the check. Yeah, that's a save that should be made. But again, Mackay and Rail made good plays before that goal was scored. A little bit later, you're going to see good puck movement here down low. There Richards gets it again. And Tufty has a wide open net. That's great puck movement. That's exactly what they wanted. But they couldn't get the finisher going. 
Those things come back to haunt you if you don't put them in when you get a chance like that. But Colby, uh, the Friars tied it up. Boy, Brandon Duhame won the faceoff, and then he had a nifty pass to Wilkins. This time of year, special teams become so important. It can bail you out of a game. It can help to turn the momentum for you when you get into these playoff situations, and that's what Providence's power play did. This is a power play that will never go stale. You see Jacob Bryson getting that puck to the middle, and then he's the distributor. He's the guy that everything runs through. Eventually, he's also the guy who gets his shot through. He's got the half slapper. It's in a good spot. You see the Providence forwards battling for the puck. And then Josh Wilkins, he's their leader offensively, and he doesn't miss from there. And guys, it could be a power play goal that advances one of these teams into the Frozen Four. This is what we anticipated. Yep. Really for both games. Exactly. Tie exactly game after two. Talking. Totally. Tense, competitive, exciting third period where so much is on the line. Who's going to get the break? Who's going to make the great individual effort? If, if you go special teams, obviously that is an advantage to uh, Providence. There's no doubt about that. It's not even close. The defending champion, Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs in white, trying to make it two national championships in a row. This is a team that's very comfortable playing one goal games. 12 of their last 13 have been decided by one, four in overtime, and they're 10 and three and winners of six straight. They, they are conditioned and trained and coached to thrive in this situation. Third year here? Third straight year in the They know what they're doing. Yeah. There's a lot of fans that haven't been here three years in a row. <laughs> Prior six straight tournament appearances. They're trying to pull off an upset here. That's more Duluth like. Throw it at the net. Get men in front. Win some battles. Hayden Hockey is going to be the Friars' most important player. He's going to perhaps have to shut this team out this period and hope his squad can tuck one in for the upset victory. The Bulldogs are the favorite here in Buffalo, New York. Well, Stevie Levy called for about four overtimes on Twitter. So I saw that. If it goes there, we're going to start looking at him. Any sense we're going to have an overtime game or two here in Buffalo because, again, it's been a defensive NCAA tournament. Good goaltenders, good coaches, tight check-in, and really an excellent group of defensemen on all four teams. Again, little things start mattering more and more as the game goes on. The teams start feeling each other out. It's not going to be a gimmicky play. They know what each other's doing. It's going to have to be a hard fought. Win the draw, take it to the net type goal, a greasy, grimy goal. Both these teams are capable of playing that way. If it's a skilled game, that favors Providence. If it gets down and dirty, that favors Duluth. Jackson Cates, Riley Tuffley, Taylor Latteru. That line's out there for Minnesota Duluth. Young and Bryson, the number one pair for the Friars, are out there in black. Out along the wall, careful. Goes over to Prince as Rail was up there. That was a good idea, pinching there. He just, yeah. The puck bounced over his stick. He made the right play. Yeah, Prince didn't know he was there. He's in a good position. Yep. And the Friars now, right around him, Hunter Shepard. O'Neill can't get that one through. Can't get that one through. But Prince still with it. He's been real good around the net. Watch out for the hold if you're the, the Bulldogs right here. Prince turns and fires straight across the rink. Here comes Latteru to skate it out while the Friars start to change. Latteru. Goes and gets it. Bumps with Young, but quickly. Here comes Tate. It's been fun to watch skate today. He can really fly. Look out! Wolf lined him up, but he put himself out of position. The puck between the hash marks, and it's loose. Tate still has it. The man who was hit. Backhander saved by Shepard. That's the one thing about those hits, Barry. You do open up the middle of the ice. Well, Wolf's tired now. He's got to get off, too. You can't you put him in a situation where the puck comes back into the loose end. they got to get it out of there and get those tired guys off the ice. You could see that coming. Oh, could you ever right in front of us, man? <laughs> it goes up into the netting and the flex. Quint Kesnick is ringside with us here in Buffalo. Uh, Vincent DeHarnay, he sits outside the Providence locker room. That That is his his weekly occurrence. You know, he, he must be claustrophobic. Says he likes it cooler out in the hallway, but he'll sit by himself outside in the hall drinking his two cups of Gatorade. Meanwhile, inside the locker room, the Friars yelling, we've been here before best version of ourself I talked I spoke with coach Lehman coming out of the locker room and he, he said he called that timeout earlier he felt his team was gassed the key now is just to attack and play on their toes he's not claustrophobic he's French everyone knows that there's no room for him in the dressing room he's about six foot nine <laughs> certainly not if he's standing up with skates on back behind Hayden Hockey he's gonna try to cover it up he 
failed the first time, and then finally got it done. I, I love this point in the game. 17 minutes left. You're going to find out so much about both these teams the rest of the way. Who the coach believes in, who's going to be on the ice, which forward is going to take the draws, who's on the power play. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be... This is fun part of being a hockey fan right now. I mean, this is a game seven, essentially, in the last 20 minutes, Barry. I mean, yep. like you said, I mean, these face-offs are so magnified now because every shot and every chance just means that much more each way, especially with these two teams that really don't give you much. Dylan Sandberg behind that falls down, but still is able to ring it around the boards to Parker Mackay. Mackay don't panic with the puck, does he? He had a great, great, great second period. Three shots on goal. Helps set up the only goal for the Bulldogs. Will be called icy. Well, that one looked like it might have touched off a of Hayden hockey there. I it? thought it went right hit. under his stick. I thought that was, I thought it went right in front of you. I thought that, that almost was touched by the man in, in the neutral zone. Yeah, no, the ref makes the right call because it didn't hit the player's stick who was right in front of me. I thought it touched off a of hockey though, and he played it very casually. But you know, things happen fast out here. I'll have to go back to the replay and, and check that one out. I thought the man on the board had a good chance of touching that. He, he did touch it there. It's called the automatic, I guess. Once the, the prior defenseman won the race, they established you had the race. The puck crossed the goal line, and he touched it on the ricochet. So I guess they called it in that situation. Bryson. Stopped the at Latteru. Oh, that's a penalty. Tripping coming up on the Bulldogs. Another power play for the vaunted Friar power play unit. But they still have the puck. See if they can generate something. Hockey's not making his way to the bench yet. Now he is. McDermott waits. Here comes the extra skater. Waiting. Now they got a regroup taken by Wolf. And that is a penalty. Good pick up by Colby away from the play. Looked like a leg was stuck out there. And that'll be a, a tripping penalty on Tanner Latteru. So to the box number 13 goes. Here it, it happens. is. There's the feet. Puck goes up. by him. That's easy call. Oh, yeah. Eight into skates. That's an easy call. You called are every day. Exactly right. Yep. Called every day. Tice Thompson draws that. So here we go. We were talking about the Friar power play before the game. Boy, their first yep. opportunity. They wasted no time with Wilkins. And now see if they can take the lead in the third period. It's a great equalizer, man. It makes big guys small. Makes fast guys slow. Power plays win a lot of games. Dugan's out there. Duhane has been so good on faceoffs. I thought we might see him there. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Clear. They even tried to make a play there. That's a gutsy move. Usually you just think in a game like this, 0-1-1, zero, zero, one, one, that puck is just going to be wired. They tried to get that up to uh, Richards right there. Well, this is the second unit for Providence. No Bryson on the ice, no Wilkins on the ice. So I'm sure they'll look to get them out here as soon as they can. Probably first whistle. Wow. Can't keep okay. It. Let's see if they change now. Looks like they want yep. to. Legs over the boards. Here we go. 30 seconds gone. 30 seconds. Well, you know if you're the second unit and you start a power play, <laughs> when that happens, you're, you're you coming You get your off butt the off the ice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch out. What a nice move. In alone. Slash. Pulled down. Penalty coming up. Might be a penalty shot. It'll be close. Let's see if we get a point to center ice. I don't think we're going to. It's a slash. Gosh. It's going to be a five on three for Providence. And here's where using that timeout earlier for Nate Lehman's group, it helped earlier, but now you wish you had it. And we'll take a look at the penalty right here. And the refs make a great call, but Dugan, the freshman, Man. going off the wheels. I'm trying to figure out why that defenseman of uh, Duluth stood up in the neutral zone. That was where all this happened. There was no reason to stand up. He got beat clean. And then all of a sudden that creates a trip in front of the net. But for some reason that defense in the neutral zone I went brain dead right there and stood up when nobody had a chance of getting him. Just back in, play it smart, hesitate, delay, delay, delay. And that certainly wasn't the case. Not a good feeling if you're a defenseman when you get caught flat-footed <laughs> like he did. That's happened to me more than one time, and it is all or Try, nothing, usually Colby, nothing. Colby, try and be the coach in that situation. Oh, How boy. do you think he feels? Oh, he'd be sitting around on the bench. Big face-off. Puck in front. Shot covered up by Shepard. Trails trying to draw a penalty behind the net in a shoving match. Friars trying to keep their cool and keep this five on three for another 72 seconds. Obviously, in a perfect world, you'd like to score uh, before as quick as possible so you get two cracks at a power play. One on the five on three and then one what's left on five on four. There's Duhane. He's been great on this dot. Let's see if he can win this back to Bryson and get this thing underway. 
Good draw. Shepard clears it around. He's going to get it out. So Providence fails miserably on two faceoff attempts. Wolf should be yelling to the goaltender there. Let me have it. I can wire it down the ice a lot stronger and more sure than the goaltender. Bryson. Here come the Friars. Now they're set up. Thompson to Bryson, the quarterback. Over on the right side. Here comes Wilkins. Down low. Pass. Thompson. Shot saved by Shepard. Good puck movement. Not a lot on that from Thompson. Duhane gets it back to Bryson. Conway's in the middle. Bryson, they like the one-timer as well. Shot, blocked. Duhane trying to win the race with Rail. He interferes on him. Conway has it. Conway shot, save. He had Thompson wide open on the weak side and chose to shoot it. That first shot that Thompson had, it wasn't in his wheelhouse. He wasn't able to get good wood on it. He wanted it on his forehand side. It was more in his knees. He never got the, the, the wood on it or the amount of force that he wanted. Good puck movement, though. Everyone did what they were supposed to. Goes from side to side there. It's going down. Good battle in the corner. But Thompson wanted that in the wheelhouse. He just didn't get it. Watch, he's ready for it. Man, Thompson had a tap in if he slides that across. Shepard was all over that shot. Fires trying to get control of the puck, get some drill time, but again. Hey, 21 seconds, 21 seconds. Providence needs to be careful. Their points are stinking, sinking in just a little bit too much. If you move in too much, you're going to make it easier on the penalty killer. So you want to keep a little bit of healthy spacing between you and the penalty killer. Now they're set up. One timer fade. Oh, do hit that. Down low. Bjorkquist. Here comes Lateru. One timer Dugan blocked. What a big block there by Richard. Big that is time. a sacrifice. You know that's going to hit you where it hurts. That's a big time play in the playoffs by him. Richard's been great in this game. Scored a goal, got an assist, or got an assist on the goal. Killed the penalty, playing great hockey. Flyers have still some time left here. Man advantage. Dorquist tries to step off of the wraparound. Can't get it. Young's way in deep, as Kobe mentioned. Throws it up on the netting. No, they say it's okay. Young with the defenseman. Way down low. Bryce is by himself. Way up top. Young fakes that, walks over, passes across, shot, blocked, loose, Lateru gets rid of it. Anderson's beat, man. He's made a couple great plays in front of that net, hacking and whacking, winning battles, getting that puck out of there. Great job by the killers. Obviously, this is a turning point in the game. Yeah, the Friars, if they don't win this game, they're going to look back at that inability to win clean faceoffs and really get more good chances they, than they had in that chance. And the Luke better take advantage of that. Mirages over to DeHarnay. DeHarnay battle in front, loose puck! It's sitting there, but Mackay has it, and he'll chip it out of trouble. The Friars have the Bulldogs on their heels right now. On the heels of that five on three. Both teams changing, McDermott gets it in. Tate is a fresh tank of gas. He forces the play, gets the turnover, cycles back. Number eight's been good today. Backhands it behind the net. John McDermott, pinching deep. Is Jack in front, saved by Jeffrey oh. E. Rob Zukamari. I like it, I like it. That's confidence right there. Great Indeed. sequence, great kill by uh, Duluth, man. Unbelievable job by the goaltender. The defending champs were up against the ropes. A five on three, and then another excellent chance. But Hunter Shepard says, smell the glove. Welcome back to Buffalo, New York. Semi-final game number one today on ESPN2. It's 1-1 as we enter the midway part of the third period here. Three of these four teams have won a championship this decade. UMass, first time they've ever made the Frozen Four. Their game is coming up next on ESPN2 against Denver. While the defending champs, Minnesota Duluth right now, all tied with Providence here in the second period. These are your last eight national champions. You see we're bookended by the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. Other than that, a different winner every year. So to repeat in this era, of parity is quite the accomplishment and the Bulldogs have a great chance. I hate saying this, but both those teams that play next are probably hoping that this game goes into a long, long OT. Wilkins between his legs, dances around Sandberg but has to retreat back. Here's Callahan, 23 gets it behind the net. 
The big line out there for Providence off the timeout. Yorkwist, Wilkins with the hit. Dugan's out there as well, but the puck comes out of the zone, and Mackay's there. Duluth isn't breaking. They're bending, but they're not breaking. They got to get some offense at the other end of the rink. Too much play in their zone. Yorkwist, quick shot, soft one that's gloved easily by Shepard. Yorkwist has sort of disappeared the last uh, period and a half. You called his name a lot in the first period. He was physical. He was skating around. He was winning some battles. Hasn't done that so much lately. Like a lot of players, he's battling something. Nicked up a little bit. Saw him miss some time like a couple weekends ago. Well, if you're not beat up this time of the year, you haven't had too good a year. Oh, big draw. On the way on the draw with Krieger. Thompson throws it back in. And Scott Brunovich tries to get this offense going. That's another guy you haven't heard said in a long time. Here comes Krieger, though. Quick move. Fanned on the shot. It got to Hockey, but not with much velocity. And along the board, Krieger's got some hot 25 and white. Out there with Noah Cates. Here's Cates. Tied up. Going towards the net, doesn't get to hockey. Swainey's battling, back to the point. Here's Perunovic, walking the line. Beautiful move. Oh, yes. Toss to Krieger. Whoa. Back to Perunovic, he walks in, looking. Shot goes off the glass. He wanted to pass that, couldn't find a receiver open. Those buns came out and almost blocked it. Number three. And there he is now, buns in the corner. The defenseman for the Friars. Good support from his teammates. Three against two here. Friars on the wall. But here's Rail. Wrist shot saved by hockey through traffic. Back behind the net, so now here comes the Bulldogs. Rail one-timer, it's a muffin, it gets towards wrap around. Hockey gets to the other post, can't find it, he's looking around. It's behind the net. Tufty can't get it through, still loose, and it comes out of the zone. Tufty's had the two best chances in the last period, and that one right there, he just couldn't get enough wood on it. Oh, the puck at the linesman. Shepard was trying to Wait, go for the 150-foot pass, but the linesman got in the way. Shot saved by Hockey, but the puck is loose. In front of the crease for the Friars, get it out to Prince. Prince gets it out of the zone as the pace starts to pick up and the collisions start again. As soon as the pace begins to pick up, that's when we see the collisions. Uh, the loose best couple shifts in, two, in 40 minutes, man. They were moving the puck, they were hunting it, they had great cycles, good job. Mikey Anderson, good job to keep it alive. Get it deep. Friars will try to get it out, but Exel's there. You see the Bulldog defensemen are, are very pinching aggressively at the wall right now. Because they're getting help from the forwards. They know the forwards will be back there for him. Rah! Blocker save, rebound, Exel! Score! <laughs> Billy Exel, 2-1, Bulldogs. Well, Butchie, that's exactly what we were talking about. The defensemen for the Duluth were pinching down. They were keeping plays alive. They could, they could do that because of the fact that they had men covering up for them. There's the D going down. There's the forward on the blue line. Now we're going to see a good little drop pass. There's the shot, and look at the battle. Look at the battle. 16 wins that race. That loose puck, but it all started at the point. With the defense pinching, the wingers taking his spot, and being creative. Exel, great play winning that battle. You can see as soon as Exel dropped the puck, Butchie, he took off for the front of the net and beat that defenseman, the man who was on him, to that loose puck. Great job. Just his third goal of the year. He doesn't score a lot, but it's a huge one. This is 41st game. Came in with two goals in 40 games, but that is a huge one to give the defending champs the lead. Back on the Friars, all fanned on his Bjorkquist. Got into his feet a little quickly, and he was unable to tee it up. Dugan fakes, wheels, fires. Good stick work there by Sandberg, who followed him up to the high slot. Don't take any penalties. No penalties. Yes. Oh, the Bulldogs. Their bark is back. Number 16, Billy Exel, crashing the net off the blocker save and gets it to go off his knee pad, it looked like. Hey, start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app, visiting ESPNPlus.com for these great title fights, both exclusive on ESPN Plus, Lomachenko, Krola, Friday night.
Holloway Poirier Saturday night. Again, both on ESPN Plus in English and Spanish. Big goal by Billy Exo. I don't think his stick ever touched the puck bear. I think he used his leg, his body, whatever it took to use his momentum to punch it in. It's a third period goal. Great shot from the point. But you see Exo, he dropped the puck and he never stopped. He just kept going to the front of that net. And he won the race. And did he go off a skate? Did he go off a knee pad? Doesn't yeah, matter. Right. The fact is he won that race. That's why the goal was created. Flyers have to tie it up now. They got some time. This is one of the toughest teams in the country to figure out. Also to score a goal late in the game. We mentioned their propensity and success in one goal game. Bryson Richon never got through. Rebound in front. Oh, the backhander almost goes. Wilkins had a chance to tie it up. Bjorkwist right into the net of Shepard. Which he, Hunter Shepard has been very good in this game. He's been awesome, especially in that penalty kill. But he continues just to give solid goaltending. Chopping the point. Lots of traffic. Oh, he oh, lifts Wilkins. Lifts. That thing went right up on the edge of his stick, and he forklifts it right up over. But, guys, Providence oh, is a well better open. team when they're coming from behind. Look at these chances they're generating. It's almost like it's a wake-up call. Every time they give up a goal, we see this major push coming from them, and I have a feeling that's what we're in store for the last nine minutes. Well, it definitely will be if they're behind a goal, I can tell you. Yeah, so the, the puck goes on edge like that. It's on, when it's on your forehand, you can sometimes control it to keep it lower. But on your backhand, Barry, when it goes on edge, it's so hard to keep it, obviously, at, at a line drive situation. Well, right there, you heard Colby talking about curves and sticks oh. before. That matters a little bit. Uh, and backhand is harder to control than forehand, obviously. You got lots of wood on it. That thing was moving. It wasn't like he fanned on it by any stretch of imagination. So, again, maybe the brakes are starting to go uh, the loose way again. They didn't for a while there. The penalties were against them, the five on threes which they killed off, now they're being rewarded for their effort. That's been a weird game to figure out. Disallowed goals and penalties. Momentum has shifted so quickly back and forth. I'm a karma guy. I, I think hard work rewarded. And then, uh, you know, they worked their butts off there for about three minutes. Brunovich head up. Goes to Krieger, who's moved really well this third period. He's flying around the ice. 25 is really chewing up the ice. Getting the punch like he did right there. But Bryson has it, passes it up. Nice job to Thompson. Tice Thompson, chips, chases, slides it across. Oh, he had Duhane, but it couldn't get to him. Coming down the slot. That went right off a of wolf skate, guys. That's an inch away from Duhane being in all alone. That's a little bit of puck luck for the, for the defense in Wolf. Now, Perenovich is weak in the neutral zone, too. That put Wolf into a very, very precarious situation. Lateral shot. Blood by Hunt. Oh, can't control the rebound. It's loose again. Kept in. Anderson. Louis Rail. Shot hard, wide, rebound, save off the end boards. It came right to number 20, Jackson Cates, but hockey with the save. Man, the Friars came so close, Colby, for a two-on-one. Yeah, big defensive play by Wolf. As you can see, he goes stick extended, uh, but look, it's the tip of the toe of his skate as he gets up on his edge. I would like to say he that's a skill play, guys, but I think we're going to go with luck on that one. But sometimes you'll take that this late in the game. But nice little pickup there with the cameras work. But uh, wow, that was close. That was hey, Hayden, close. Hayden Hockey is kicking out some rebounds just yeah. about on every shot. That's going to come back and haunt you. you got to control that puck off your body. Jackson Cates just limped off the ice right in front of me for Duluth, the forward. You could see him laboring just a little bit, and, and he's getting a little bit of attention on the ice. Something uh, stung him right here in the neutral zone, so we'll keep an eye for that. Down to 7.29 in the third period. The winner moves on to the championship game on Saturday night on ESPN2. When will Providence start opening up a little bit like they were before when they were down by one goal? So uh, they've done it before. They started taking over the game when they did that. Seven and a half minutes left. We'll see, you know, when Coach Lehman decides to open up the door a little bit and let the horses out a little bit more than he has right now. Wilkins tries to walk around the faceoff. Richard to get a shot off, but couldn't do it. And Duluth better not try and sit on this thing for seven minutes with this uh, talented offensive team against them. Yorkwist, aggressive four check. That was outside the zone. Yorkers will have to touch up. Or it's offside. Tipped in by Richards. He'll go change. Hockey leaves it for Spencer Young. Around the boards it comes. Dugan. Vegas Golden Knight draft pick with the puck. Over the Mirages. He's an Islander pick. Four guys back. Hard wrist shot. High. Rebound. Bad foul. Dugan goes to get it. 
Bjorkwist can't keep it in. He wants that puck too, Butchie Dugan. He's banging yeah. his stick through the neutral zone. A lot of times a freshman, they get a little timid, but I'm telling you, this guy, Dugan, he wants the puck on his stick. A couple times when he got pulled off the ice, you can see he did not like it. This guy is a gamer. You almost like that edge and that attitude out of a player this time of year. Yeah, he's a local from nearby Rochester, so he's pumped to be here in Buffalo for this Frozen Four. Tate. We'll probably see him late, Barry, when the coach decides who's going to be yep. the last set of skaters because that eighth right, right. has been flying. Rebound in front. Oh, Good deflection there. Juicy one. Could hear it hit the pillows of Shepard, but no fryer there to tuck it home. Shepard continues to be great in that. Very confident. Fryer, Duhame on the wall with Thompson and Conway. fryer has got to start to put the pedal to the metal slowly. We're under six minutes to go now. This is what the Bulldogs will do. Board battles. Get it out. Take the body. They don't want the puck near anything clear. They want it against Wood, and that's the board. Keep it on that side. Don't put it in the middle of the rink whatsoever. Yorkfist just jumped back out on the ice, guys, so it looks like this Wilkins line is going to start coming out every other. And they deserve Barry, it. Yeah, you got it, right, got it. Barry? They're Five playing good. Minutes. Reward your players that are playing good. they got to be out on the ice. Five and a half to go now. Remember, Providence used their timeout, so they won't have it to set up a play offensively or to give certain guys a rest as the game winds down and the goalie is pulled. We'll keep an eye on hockey for you. Sometime Whoa. around the two-minute mark. Shot in front, never got through. Wilkins. Breakdown, breakdown. And the Bulldogs get out of trouble. Miller will go after it. But the Bulldogs change again. Short shifts to finish up this game, to keep those fresh skaters, keep the pressure on. Mirages, quick pass, here come the Friars. Sukumar has been a dangerous player at times. Puck comes out of the zone, and look out. There's a stick laying here, yeah. comes Kepke! One-handed shot, can't get through. Good play by Bryson not to take a penalty there. Real smart, he stayed on his back hit. Hand they're, pass. They're calling a hand pass, but smart play there by Bryson. It's getting to that time, that nervous time. <laughs> Under five minutes left, it's a one goal game in Buffalo. In a draft rocking with playmakers, teams in need of a quarterback are seeking a hit maker. And these three are making everyone listen. The NFL Draft begins April 25th on ESPN and ABC. In between games one and two, we get live on-site coverage from our studio group. John Brickley, Sean Richland, Dave Starman, they'll recap game one. Look ahead to Denver and UMass in game number two. There are the boys right there, left to right. Smart Dave, crew. John John. That's a smart crew. Last 13 NCAA tournament games for Minnesota Duluth. Wow, what three. a surprise. 12 to 13 by one goal. Final score of those 12 games with either 2-1 or 3-2. We're 2-1 <laughs> right now. Four have gone overtime. They won them all. Only well, game not decided by get, one goal was an empty netter. To get to 3-2, that means overtime, Johnny. And here they are. Less than five minutes away from returning to the championship game where they'll try to go back-to-back -back national titles. Last year in St. Paul. This year here in Buffalo, the Friars of Providence trying to tie this thing up, force overtime. And they'll have a face-off in the offensive end. I'll tell you, Justin Williams, or Williams line is going to be out there a lot. You know, Makai's on there, obviously. Kupke, that line has been great all night long. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Wolf. You're going, to see, you're going to see a lot of everybody the coach depends on. You're going to see nothing of the guys the coach does not believe in. That's what you're going to see the rest of this game. Here comes Duhame, Conway, and Thompson. Thompson, the right-handed shot, will take the face off on this dot. He'll try to get it back to DeArnay and also Callahan's out there. Face off, sticks at the dot. Can't use your glove there. You get a penalty. And be really careful there. We saw that during the regionals. Good discipline there, and the Friars control. Hot deep. Here goes Conway after. Wolf rims it around. They are nay aggressive pinch. We'll see that the rest of the way from prior defensemen. Yeah. You put those big feet side by side, there's yeah. no way that puck is getting by. Conway can't control it. Callahan tries to step up. Here comes Thompson. 27. Down the wall. Kept in by O'Neill off the bench. Prince keeps it in. Up top. Fryer's got to move it quickly. 
Can't dust it too much here. It's not a good play, man. Give him time to go back and get settled up. Three and a half to go. Once that number hit two up there, that's when Hayden Hockey will really start to look towards Nate Damon. Just stay there. Just stay there. Of course. Make somebody come and get you, then one man's down. There you go. There Good goes play. Perunovic. Smart play. Great quarterback back there. Ladaru throws it behind the net. Jackson Cates, his brother Noah's on the first line. That almost went in, John. Man. Protected the puck. Back to rail. Rail head up. Hockey's right in front of Hockey. Trying to use that big body now. Yep, stay there. Get that puck in that zone and put him back there. This is where the Bulldogs have really choked you off defensively. There's no room in the neutral zone. And right now they're possessing the puck to end this game under three minutes. Fires need to face off at the other end. No, we don't want to do that. Hey, Sports Center tonight after the Masters with Steve Levy and John Anderson. They'll have the NBA's best from the regular season. Plus, what did Tiger think about his first round today? Very good first round for Tiger Woods. And why Lomachenko is the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Sports Center 11 Eastern on ESPN and the app. No, you're right there, John. You don't want the goaltender freezing it, but maybe the goaltender's not confident by in moving the puck. You'd much rather him be con or, uh, cautious than overconfident, but you'd like him to move it right there. Don't give uh, Duluth a chance to get settled up in, in their lanes and in their uh, checking positions. It's going to be icing. Oh, boy. So now we're 231. The next time the Friars get the puck down the other end, we'll keep an eye on hockey. This yes. could be about the time. They'd love to get a faceoff at some point, obviously in front of Hunter Shepard, and then pull him and try to come up with some pressure. That's what Nate Lehman's thinking. For you numbers, guys, the numbers show that the earlier you pull the goaltender, the more chance you got of scoring a goal. So Patrick Watt sort of made that happen. Yeah. The first to change the rules, yeah. It was always about a minute. Yeah. And then it got longer and longer. Patrick was like a 250. Bulldogs have the puck. They're going to keep it down there as long as they can. Here that comes was, Callahan. That was a great shot right there. It was going to come right out in front of the net. Friars can't get to the other end of the rink. Fresh bodies coming on, too. Great job there by Duluth getting four fresh bodies out. Kepke plays keep away. Back behind that shot in front. Kepke's tired. That. He doesn't even know. Duhame tries to make a move around rail. Can't o do it. Obviously, the referees are going to be very lenient right now. They don't want to determine who wins this game. Under two minutes left. Providence needs to get the puck to the other end of the rink. The Bulldogs just want to do this. Keep it along the wall. Oh, Johnny, that's heaven for them, man. Feel that board against your butt right there. Stay there. Back to the point. Wolf. Rail. They are nays in front trying to tie up Swaney. Krieger, this is perfect for the defending champs. Less than 90 seconds left. Yeah, they just ate up about 30 seconds of time by ragging it down there and keeping Providence pinned. This is a real nice job. Hockey's, by the loop. Hockey started to come out, but then possessed. He's going to have to come right now. He's going to get a chase his D-man here and give them an extra body. Maybe they can get the puck off the ice with the extra body. Here comes Bryson. Wilkins can't handle it. Hockey's out of the net now. Net is empty. Friars have it. Less than one minute. Dugan's been their best player. He fires it down the ice. Oh, it looked deflected. like it went off of a stick. It right was, in front of me. It? but it's yep. still, still going to come outside the yep. zone. Unfortunately, he wasn't inside the zone. Oh, okay, yeah, picture book. Duluth did exactly what they had to do. Goalie's gone. Six on five. We've been here before. Now he's going back on now. With the, with the face off at center ice. They feel 54 seconds, they got lots of time to get it in, get it set up and get scoring chances. So you get down, you know, 10, you know, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, you might take them out and leave them out with a goal, with a face off right in that area. They can't win the face off, that's why they leave it. Uh, Duluth has been great winning draws, great winning draws today. Got to get down and get a face off. Hockey will obviously follow Rogers as he comes up the ice. Long, nice pass, so now the puck is deep. Hockey's off, extra attacker on. Six skaters for Providence. Whoa! This puck's going to go in the net. The Bulldogs are going back to the championship game. Who blew the house down, John? Sandberg. That big defense right there at Duluth, man. They got the job done. The strength of this team are those six great defensemen. It's why they won the national championship last year. They all came back this year and are going back to the natty again. Exactly right. I thought Rail was great. I thought the Anderson boys are great. I thought Wolf was great. Right here, you're lucky if this goes in. But you, 
You know, you don't care. You're winning draws. You'll take faceoffs in your own zone. Oh, man, that's a great feeling. <laughs> Kobe, that's a great feeling, right? Oh, boy, it brings back a lot of memories. The bench celebrations are the most fun. And like you guys said, this has been a picture-perfect Minnesota Duluth effort. They took a little bit of heat in the second period, but the sign of a great team, they bend, they don't break, they block shots. This is a team that is just built so well by Scott Sandoval. Less than 20 seconds to go. So the Bulldogs will get their chance to repeat. The first team to repeat since the Denver Pioneers. Here they come again with the net empty. Justin Richards is going to have a two-goal game. He deserves it. He was the best player on the ice for Duluth tonight. I thought he was excellent. Him and Makai, I thought they played very, very well. Kupke had a great game also. Scored the goal that they needed very, very bad. Made a lot of great plays. And at 5-on-3, Johnny, he was out there. Obviously the turning point in this game when they didn't score in a 5-on-3. Absolutely. So the Bulldogs will move on to try to repeat. And they do. The last team to repeat, the Denver Pioneers, 2004-2005. Minnesota Duluth advancing to their third straight national championship game. They lost to Denver two years ago. They won last year, and now they'll have a chance to repeat for the Providence College Flyers and their seniors. This is their final game, Scott Conway. Ryan Tate, Brian Lemos, and Vincent DeArnay. Hayden Hockey, their Providence College careers are over with a disappointing Frozen Four loss, and that man will likely move on to pro hockey as well. Casper Bjorkwist, he's the Penguins' top prospect. So there are highs and lows in these games, and Quint Kesnick, he is with the winning coach. Coach, congratulations. Uh, how do you best characterize your defense? Uh, well, they, they tested us. I mean, we knew they throw a lot of pucks at the net, and uh, there were some anxious moments, but uh, our goaltender, again, you know, made the saves, and uh, our guys uh, buckled down a little bit there in the third period. Disallowed goals, penalties, momentum changes. What, what stood out? What was the difference in, in your eyes? Well, you know, we told the guys before, that's how these games are. There's going to be ebbs and flows. There's going to be things you can't control, and you know what? I thought we didn't respond very well after the disallowed goal, but you know what? We came back, and and got the job done. Thank you, Coach. Bucci, let Coach, we're going to let Coach shake here a bit. Yeah, that's good, Quint. Obviously, a former great lacrosse player. He understands it was important for Sandlin to start shaking the hands of the Providence College Friars. So as we watch this scene, Colby, we'll start with you down there. You've been a part of this on both ends. Uh, what goes through the winning and losing players' minds? Well, first, got to give credit to Providence. This is a team that fought through it in the regional they came back from a three goal deficit in the opening game of the tournament and you know Nate Lehman has built such a great program for Providence I mean they they were really not a factor when I was playing college hockey 10 years ago so credit to him but this Minnesota Duluth program they just do things the right way there were so many times tonight where we could have clipped off things and showed all the little the stick position and all the good plays, body position, blocking shots. I mean, Barry, if you're a coach, and obviously you were, I mean, you gotta love what you saw out of Minnesota Duluth. If you're a coach in that Minnesota team and the uh, Providence team, you're very proud of your players. They both worked their butts off. Providence had the chance on the five on three. They didn't get the job done. They'll always look back at that. But Duluth, we talked about their defense at the start of the game. I thought the defense was great. Wolf was physical. I thought Rail played great. The Anderson boys, uh, you, you saw, uh, four or five great defensive plays the last five minutes of that period. Just a great job by both teams. Well, game one in the books. Game two coming up next between Denver and UMass. But until then, let's talk some hockey.